Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another dose of WrestlePlug X. Let's talk business. I am the host of WrestlePlug, of course, genuine master of shithousery, Aaron Nix. Joining me, of course, is Mr. Clean Anton Green. Hey. And the hitman, Gabe Myers. Peace, people. Hope you're all good and well. So if you watch the channel or you listen to Let's Talk Business, providing Anton backed up his end of the bargain and actually uploaded it, because I can't tell. Because I, I did. I did. The last fucking <laughs> video on your Facebook page is from like a year ago or some shit, man. Come on. Blame, blame, blame the hitman. <laughs> and then blame me. <laughs> I'll blame him and so on and so on. We're gonna we're gonna get on top of that. There'll be some yeah, there'll be yeah, some. He didn't take long to fucking throw you under the bus, did he? <laughs> I was gonna say. So no, I, said, I said he'd blame me in return. It's, it's both our responsibilities. We'll both be on it. We're a minute in. But yeah, we're gonna review money in the bank, have a cheeky little go over of it, and obviously review our predictions as well. Because if anyone watched, we made our predictions, uh, <laughs> which dropped obviously uh, on the day before. At lunchtime, so I'd be very that Gabe's face says it all. Yeah, yeah. we got a new Nostradamus in oh, the God. house. <laughs> yeah. I was right. oh. he, Aaron took my spot. Oh, yeah, he's he, he, he stole my spot. Right, right, he stole my spot. <laughs> not liver spot, not dark spot, my you spot. Have, I, you have no idea how smug I was by the end of it. I bet you were. I was watching, just thinking, this guy, <laughs> he's got it, he's got it, he's got it. Like, what? Yeah. So, uh, Money in the Bank 2023. By the way, uh, what do we think about it being in London? I thought it was really sick. The crowd were immense, weren't they? Yeah. I thought the crowd was crazy. I, think, I thought it was crazy. And I thought, you know what? Especially, again, anybody who's been to the old 2 it looks big, but it's not actually that big. But the way that the setting and the way it was kind of um, presented, I thought it looked a lot bigger than what it was. I, you know, myself, I've been there before. Have you been there before, Aaron? Yeah, I've been there for a few things. I've also been there for Raw and SmackDown tapings like mm. a few years ago now. And they always had about 14,000, 15,000. And that always looked ready. But like you say, it's not actually as big as you think. They no. made it look almost like a stadium. It looked like yeah. it had far more mm. elevation than it actually does. Because mm. wherever you sit, like I have lots of friends in the upper deck who have got tickets, bless them. And um, they were showing me like their videos. And I was like, yeah, that's a really good view, even from up there. So, mm. you know, not like Clash of the Castle, where it does kind of feel like they were ants to a certain degree. They, yeah. they did a great job, great setup. Uh, very similar to the Puerto Rico one, uh, Backlash. Like, yeah. Very similar setup with the ramp kind of, you know, curved instead of just a straight ramp. I quite like yeah. that. Different yeah, um, yeah, great show. Fans are immense, obviously. Uh, we had John Cena return as well. Probably quickly brought yeah. that. John Cena teased WrestleMania in the UK. How close do you think we are to mm. WrestleMania in London? How, I mean, how many years out do they lock? Because there's there's a couple of years worth where they're telling like three or four, isn't it? Like Something like four. that, isn't it? So, yeah. yeah. So, we might, I mean, you'd assume that that's not just sort of like bluffing. You'd hope that, yeah, but I guess we're a few years out anyway, regardless, whatever happens. Well, the thing is, I know they've got the next two down. So, maybe yeah, the third year. Right. Yeah. Maybe. The third year, so. maybe yeah. Yeah. I know they've just got some. The same year they get WrestleMania, but maybe like at a different time of year. So, yeah. Or, or we, they could do the trick because now it's a two night thing. We could get one night, <laughs> one night, <laughs> one night in London, and then one night one, night one from like London, night two from from US or something like oh, that. Oh, WrestleMania two, what a disaster! Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you see, the, the thing with I think WrestleMania, especially in Wembley, if because it most likely will be Wembley. Yeah, it had to be, wouldn't it? I guarantee they will sell out ninety thousand. I I I'll guarantee that for sure. I guarantee it. Again, I don't mean to crap on AEW. Yes, I do. But you guys are only going to get like 60, 65, 66,000, which is good. Don't yeah, worry. It's very, very good. Mm. But WWE will get 90,000 people. No, oh, no. But WrestleMania as well. <laughs> yeah, you, you can't. No, oh, they okay. as well. Like they have yeah. far more star power. Mm. They have far more commercial value as well. Like they mm. have more mainstream product value, and they're also just better at advertising. They oh, just yeah. aren't. And uh, to be fair, they've had what a fifty-year head start, so they should yeah. be. Yeah. You know, it's it is. Uh, sorry, it was hard not to watch this product to think. I'll be very surprised if All In is close to that. Yeah, I don't think they will. I'll be honest. I, I, I you know what? I want them to just for the fact that obviously you have CM Punk and a few people like that. But I'm like. I don't think you guys will. You'll try, mm. but mm. yeah, I just I'm a realist to be honest. Yeah, same. Uh, and I'm also extremely good at predicting, as you're about to find out. So, Damien Priest is Mr. Money in 
back. How do you like them apples, pal? I, I couldn't believe it when he won because I, I, they made me believe. I thought LA Knight's definitely going over. He's so but, fucking yeah. He's more over than Butch, despite not being English, which I love. Yeah, Super yeah. over. Um, a really hot start to the show. Mm. I'll be honest. As soon as the first match happened, I was like, "Oh, piss off, man!" I was like, "My my my night's done. It's it's ruined ruined the whole thing." But no, the match overall liked it. Um, Yeah, surprised me. It's weird because, like I said, I know him as Eli Drake, and when he was in Tina, I used to always say, "I used to always say to Anton, this guy kind of reminds me of like Rock Austin ish kind of mixed together." Mm. And I said, "You know what? He's a decent worker." Looks quite good, you know, built and everything. But mic work, I admit, he's gotten better. He's gotten a lot better as time's gone on. Right now, yeah. yeah. Mm. And the thing is, I think he talked about how, um, was it, Triple H was kind of worried about his age. Obviously, him being 14 and putting him in, in you know, the manager position. And I thought, again, I know people are going to say we're going back a bit, but Brett in 97 was 41. And that's not considered old. Hogan in the, what was he, uh, was it, Blair early 90s? Yeah, he was 44, 44, I, 45. I think the thing there, though, is that they'd already in their mind, I'm not justifying, yeah. but that is that they were already massively established, established in their okay. 30s or whatever. And then it's yeah. like, now we carry on with that stuff. But whereas, like, LA Knight is not known no. on a big level, so it's like we're starting your massive superstardom in your 40s. Mm-hmm. That's pop, that's I assume that's where they're the differentiates sort of like yeah. with Hogan, Flair, Brett, those kind of guys. Then you got they, Batista, though, like Batista mm-hmm. started at 36 as Deacon, nobody really gave a shit, and then he, no. yeah. About 40 and started winning world titles. So, yeah, you know, it does kind of go, you know, it depends who you look at, I guess. But yeah. we're kind of, we're lucky that you get the best of both worlds. You get Randy Orton who wins at 24, at, you know, SummerSlam. Mm-hmm. And then there's against Redacted. And then if it's obviously, you know, different stories, it depends who you are. But yeah. it's nice that I personally think great wrestlers don't hit their true prime until they're in their sort of mid to late 30s anyway. That's kind mm-hmm. of, that's shown in a lot of them. Don't you think that's mad though? Like for me, I'm, again, I don't know about you, Aaron, but I'm a sports guy. I love sports in general. Yeah. And most times in sports, your mid twenties or your mid twenties to maybe your early thirties yeah. is your peak. Yeah. In wrestling, it's like mid thirties, end thirties, even your forties, like your peak. It's like very, very weird for that. I'm yeah, like that. you know, professional basketball, football, like yeah. very few professional sports where you would even realistically be getting a career when you're around forty. Normally, no you're way. out by then. Well yeah, out no by then. Most most yeah. people, obviously, you get the sort of, you know, Tom Brady who's won the Super Bowl, what, 43, 44. Yeah. Um, but that's, again, he's surrounded by so many different elite athletes as well. And yeah. even Michael Jordan sort of at the back end, you know, he still had such a great cast behind him. Oh, yeah. Uh, sure. But yeah, no, you are a bang. It's weird, isn't it, as well? Because we yeah. know how physically intensive our sport is because we're oh, not... Yeah. We're not just guys who talk about it. We've all gone through that process. And mm. it's fucking physically very demanding, very intensive, far more than a lot of other sports are. A lot of sports are just kind of very cardio dependent and then the skills mm. kind of go with it. Whereas with wrestling, like you have to try and hold up. And it's weird that you actually get, I think maybe it's just the mentality. I've always said wrestling is an acumen sport, a mental acumen sport, yeah. where it's all about how well you look after yourself and your body. You know what bumps it. Obviously, you guys are very experienced. You're not going to go out there and do crazy young buck shit for 20 minutes. You're smart. You understand your bump card. You know exactly yeah. where the spot should be. And that kind of helps with longevity. Whereas yeah. with obviously all these professional sports, you've got to be at the max peak and going 100 miles an hour yeah. from the get-go. And yeah. as soon as you slow down, all of a sudden you get overtaken. It's as simple as that. So yeah. maybe that makes a difference. But are we all right with yeah. David Priest being Mr. Money in the Bank? What do we think about that? You go first, Anton. You go. Well, first. I was gonna say I'd have, I I would have preferred LA Knight from a like actual preference. If it weren't gonna be LA Knight, I wanted it to be Logan Paul. So I get the prediction right, but I didn't really want it to be Logan Paul. So yeah, and I'll say Logan I'm Paul. By the way, Logan Paul was fantastic in this match. He did, yeah, he did good. Um, Sorry, they took but a nasty, he, he just they took like, a this guy run. gets how to be a dickhead so well because yeah. it's natural yeah. for him, obviously. Yeah, but it's he that plays thing. That, he plays that well. You know what? He was the perfect villain, and the crowd ate that shit up. They were yeah. all over it for the get go. And to be honest, like, I love it. Like the, all the marks were like, "Yeah, fuck it, we showed Logan Paul." It's like, no, you literally you made into him a yeah. million dollars. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, like, that's the whole point of it. Yeah. yeah, it was good shit. What do you think, Gabe? It's a weird one because I'll be honest. I know he's he's a good he's a great worker, but I'm still like that with him in terms of I I kind of buy him, but I don't buy him. Age thing is nothing. I don't care about the age thing, but it's like it's that old. I think I listen to a lot of like Jim Ross podcasts 
And he used to always say that he had the marquee WrestleMania, uh, WWF Championship, Stone Cold versus dot, 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 or Hulk Hogan versus dot, dot, dot. The name's not bad, but it's just, I don't know, it's just something seems a bit... He feels like he's not quite... He still feels like he's Mr. United States Championship. Mr. Yeah, I, yeah, I think that's probably what it is. I still see him as that. That's probably what it is. So. Mm. But again, I think, like you said, he carries the briefcase around for a little while. I'll be honest, if, if they can put him... Um, if he, ugh, apologize. If they can get him to beat Roman, woof. Oh, yeah. <laughs> mm. But at the same time, like you said, would you want him to beat Roman or would you want Cody or somebody else? I don't know. Um... Yeah, because that obviously they teased that later on, didn't they, in the title match? And then Michael Cole was very keen at the beginning of that tag match to be like, don't forget Damian Priest, everybody. Was like, oh, okay, so now we get it. He can cash in on either. Yeah. Which makes it far more alluring. If he was stuck to the brand, I don't care about Seth Rollins no. being dethroned enough no. to think, oh, yeah, Damian Priest, if he cashes in, that's it. That's not a huge moment to me. If he cashes no. in on Roman, that's Ooh, a big yeah. Mm-hmm. Much, much bigger deal. The bottom line is that Roman is still the A champion by some margin, in my opinion. Yeah. I, I don't think it's close. And obviously, the storytelling helps as well because that is by far and away the best story in wrestling. Nothing's close. Um, and AEW doesn't even have storyline, so it doesn't really no. matter. But um, <laughs> not really, let's be honest. Like, I'll ask a question. Would you say, uh, Dame, even though it's Damon Priest, Damon Priest cashing on Roman Reigns is as big as Brock Lesnar beating Take Up WrestleMania? From mm. from that kind of aspect, in terms of it's so long, nobody could beat Lesnar and Bam, Brock, like one, two, three. Okay. I think the one thing that sort of makes it a little bit not necessarily obvious because you still would be the better man would still go to Roman, even in oh, a yeah. But the thing that kind of stands out with Lesnar and Undertaker more is the fact that it's just a straight one on one match. There was nothing on the line other than the streak, which obviously <laughs> is the most important thing for Taker. But at the same time, it's always the odds on favorite is you think at that point they built up like what 20 30 years where it's like yeah he doesn't lose at wrestlemania so when he just pins him there's that incredible you know obviously everyone's seen you know the black guy with a t-shirt he's like like it's it's incredible i don't think you're yeah. getting a level of shock like that if priest wins it's still a massive deal i don't think it's i think it's ever so slightly underneath it in terms of shock okay. because he's got the device of the money in the bank as well which means yeah. he's got that kind of you know, get around of yeah, it's shocking, but at the same time, he's he's not going to cash in on him clean, is he? He's going to wait. No. So yeah, fair enough. If he cashes in on him, which is interesting, because they also obviously teased um, some judgment day shenanigans, didn't they? And of course, yeah. they see what cost people. So uh, women's tag team match, um, a little bit of a surprise here. Mm. Uh, I, I <laughs> what makes me laugh is I got this prediction right solely based <laughs> on the fact I fancy Liv Morgan. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. <laughs> Money! <laughs> um, yeah, literally, the whole story here is Shayna Baszler just randomly out of nowhere. Just out of nowhere. Ronda Rousey in turn, mm-hmm. which I believe at least one of you called, actually. Like, at least one of you hinted at it on the predictions. But um, it was... Not yeah. me, I didn't see it coming. Like, no, it caught me... It, it just felt completely like there was no purpose to it. Like, it's like, it was like yeah. everything's going along through and it's like, huh? Like, what's... You didn't tease it or anything, didn't they? I was, it was, yeah, I was thinking, did I miss something? Nothing. Did I miss, like a, like, a collision or something? I was like, what? Like, hey? Why is why is she just battering her and then she's done this earlier? This should have happened hmm. ages ago. I've been waiting yeah. for Shayna Baszler versus Ronda Rousey, and now I don't care as much because you've taken too long to get to this point, and then you haven't given me any emotional bit. No. So, like you know, I think that it's it's a good thing in many ways, I suppose, to kind of reinforce the fact that it was almost like, hey, you didn't lose the belt, so have them back because of the injury, mm. which is cool. I think it was a good built-in way of. Liv Morgan sort of she never beats Ronda Rousey yeah. Queen if you notice that's kind of yeah. the storyline there so yeah. uh, I personally think Ronda Rousey versus Shayna Baszler if done properly with long enough build um, is a legitimately good match because yeah. it's two women who can legitimately go out there and fight to a certain mm. degree they can make it kind of semi shoot which is nice yeah. I just feel like why couldn't you have done this like you've had like almost two or three years to do this like yeah. oh, the only yeah. thing with the only thing with this, though, is that I read something about her husband saying about um, they want to plan to have another kid. So I thought, oh, okay. So mm, it's more... Just abrupt. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah, just to get that done. Yeah, it, felt, yeah, it felt like it was a complete like, change, of course. Like, the yeah. them winning the NXT tag team belts was... They're like, ah, oh, maybe we shouldn't have done that kind of... Yeah, it's like... They unified was, them, didn't they? they yeah, it's them. like, it's as if they didn't think ahead. Like, this wasn't in the plans at that point. You, you'd assume, like, why would you have them beat the other team as well? They get both sets of belts and all of a sudden, no, just out of the blue, their team breaks up. For no reason, belts. Yeah, it's like it makes but, you think that something changed. Something came came you up. You know what it is? 
Maybe, like I said, I think it was, it's Travis, um, Travis Brown's um, husband. It? I think maybe he, maybe they kind of told them late after they'd already done it. It's like, well, like, you know, yeah. I'm trying to go for a baby blah, blah, blah. It's like, oh, you fools. Like, we've already done this. So it's like, ah, okay. Yeah, it also like, hurts the tag team division because you haven't really got any credible women's tag teams. Yeah. No. You got Isla Dawn and that could go after him, which is quite cool. Mm. I think that's quite cool. But, mm. they, you know, and I think you've got um, uh, Casey Catanzaro, you know, whatever she's called now, um, Katana Chance and Caden Carter. Yeah. But it just feels like, oh, okay, you've just broken up one of the truly only valid tag teams you've got. Yeah. They keep going one step forward and 10 steps back with this women's tag team division. And, it, mm. you know, the match was fine. It wasn't great. I thought mm. it was all right. It, was, it, was, it served its purpose, but it wasn't. Mm. It was in the right position in the card, though, because everyone's on a come down from the ladder match. So, you know, bring people down a little bit level, nice chilled match, and then move on to something else that's got a little bit more glamour about it. I hear people keep comparing um, okay, Raquel to China. I'm like, eh, I, I don't I don't see it, but... Um... Not really. I think Raquel, obviously, much better worker, oh, but yeah. it was never about work, was it? It was all about the yeah. image. Yeah. Um, but Raquel just doesn't have that star power that China has. And also China comes in in a period where all the women were like, you know, pretty little things, weren't they? Like tiny, you know, yeah, Jacqueline, who was great. Was it? I thought, was like, I thought like Bull McCann or all those people nah, in China that was, came. That was quite a few years before, right? At least no, it was Alundra Blaze. I know Alundra Blaze. Alundra Blaze was gone as well, wasn't she? 95. Yeah, right, was there was uh, something. When, she, when China came in, the yeah. like the women's title was had gone mm. back to being just a prop. It was around oh, seven. Yeah. Man and Jacqueline, Trish and Lita would. Uh, well, still- even that was even that came after China. But that was after, yeah. Was yeah, the ti- that title because it was like there was no t- no women's title for a few years, and you exactly. had it was more like the valets, like Sunny, Marlena. Yeah, like you just had like that was where the women were sit. They were like the managers now. But that's why you stood out. You then mm. also even someone like Alundra Braves was never like jacked or a specimen. No. Like, oh, no, 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 no. Holy shit. Like I, you know, most of us mm. as young kids have never seen a woman who even looked anything like that. So yeah. it's just like, oh, okay, that's pretty fucking wild. Like, and also she was one of the few people to mix it up with men getting stunned by Austin at No Way Out 98, mm-hmm. those kind of things like kind of really stood out. Whereas, you know, sort of yeah. nowadays I think, okay, like we've got more powerful women and we've got more incredible like specimens in terms of women's wrestling. People like Charlotte Flair, for instance, is a good example of that. So she's not she and uh, Raquel doesn't stand out as much. And also she's so fucking bland, like on the mic and stuff. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, she's, yeah. she's lovely, don't get me wrong. She's beautiful. Oh, yeah. She's obviously a lovely human being and you know obviously I don't want to fuck with her boyfriend Braun, but <laughs> at the same time it's like what? Braun's yeah. Yeah, she's with Braun Strowman. But it's um it's that thing of yeah, nice, <laughs> okay. nice, nice, nice going, Braun. Nice uh, <laughs> good for you, mate. <laughs> but you know, at the same time, it's that thing of like, yeah, you don't really offer anything other than the fact that yeah, you got you got a nice back. <laughs> That's about it. Uh, very impressive. Bit of power, half decent worker. Um, but yeah, she but, and there's a reason she's in the tag division, because if she was good enough, she'd be on her own. Mm. Yeah. Gunter versus Matt Riddle. Um, this gave me an erection, if I'm being honest. Uh <laughs> I love very, very, very powerful men beating the shit out of each other. And this was meaty Oscar. Do you know what I loved about this? Like, normally Gunter gets, what, 25, 30 minutes? And mm. they have this. With this, it was a straight MMA shoot almost. This yeah. Is this, for me, is closer to an MMA fight than you'll ever get from Ronda Rousey or someone who, ironically mm. enough, went far further in that field. Even someone like Lesnar. Um, this was uh, literally, as I'd say, as close as you can get to an actual sportsman like fight as opposed mm. to just a wrestling match uh with the added bonus of the start i thought this was fucking great but then gunter is in my opinion has the best matches continuously of any wrestler in the world not kenny omega not even close because you know why because gunter is a proper wrestler not no, no, a little fucking tart who just yeah. jumps around and pretends that he doesn't gunter doesn't play wrestler he is literally a purist he's a yeah class professional wrestler and you can he is almost in a weird way in the same slot that Daniel Bryan was in where it's like right anyone who gets in the ring with him is going to have a world class match end of oh, story yeah. and again and Riddle obviously can hold his own anyway Riddle is not a scrub um, mm-hmm. and obviously Gunter retains as well which I assume everyone's cool with because I don't yeah. Really yep. know yeah we assumed oh. that didn't we I was, but at the same time, I thought, oh, honky tonk man I was like, oh. yeah of course yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's a honky tonk man I was like oh but yeah. again like you said He's had it for what, over 30 years now? It's like, well, it's got to be better. You know, could always bring Honky Tonk Man back for one more crack at it, you know? Can he dethrone Gunter at the last? <laughs> can, can, can you imagine, imagine they did that? Yeah. Can you imagine they bring, bring him back, he beats him for the belt. Next next week on, is it, is it on Raw or SmackDown? 
Smackdown. Raw, Raw is on. Oh no, it's Raw, it's isn't it? Yeah, it's Raw. Yeah. Mm. Nah, they, they won't do it. They won't do it. But again, nah. good, again, very good match. Mm. But Mr. Drew McIntyre, the Scottish psycho. Well, he, no, well, he's not psycho. He's, he's a warrior he's, now. He's isn't he? brave heart. Brave heart. He's all. He's brave hearted. Freedom. <laughs> <laughs> it's a weird one with Drew because. The news was that he was going to go back. He's going to go back. He's yeah, going to go right. to AEW. And I yeah. thought, that's you know what? Just that's just news. That's a lot of hopeful AEW fans. Definitely. Nah, yeah. I don't know. That, that's <laughs> the kind of thing they needed for, if they, for all, all in. If they could have got that, that, that would help them in a big way. Honestly, that would have been a big deal if he come out all in. That would have been yeah. sick if he like, made his debut all in and battered like CM Punk. People would have lost their shit for that. Mm. Like, that would have been good shit. But I just, I don't want anyone of that caliber to go to AEW because you know within six months they'll be doing fuck all. Yeah. I, I think I think what they need is they and you and I thought with them doing this like need to get a bunch of them. They need to really do it like you like you know you got for a, a brief period it looked like they were doing that. You had CM Punk, Daniel Bryan or Brian Danielson going in together. And it's like oh they're going to start to stockpile some real star power, really like be a contender. It really felt like that for a brief period, but it didn't. And that's what I feel like they need to do if they really wanted to be the contenders. Like they've got some good stuff going on. You need to start stockpiling real pe- yeah, like players like Drew McIntyre. How, how can they bring Goldberg in for a bit? Then? You got, you know, at the end of the day. No, no. Yeah, but that, that's you got two did. shows, don't it? You got two shows. So you got Collision yeah. and you got that crap dynamite, innit? Have they got so. rid of Rampage then? Have they mugged that off? No, it's, it's still there. It's I think still there. Collision, get... Collision's taking it over. Collision, like, to be big... fair, does look better. Like, yeah, yeah. I've been the watching them. Highlights, but I'll wait and see. It's one of those mm. things. They burn me so many times. I'm like, I'm not watching it until you prove that you've got a track record yeah. of success now. Mm. Like, you know, it's cool that they're using. It's more heavy hitting guys that I like, like Samoa Joe and CM Punk. Yeah. You know, actual proper professional wrestlers, not a bunch of cosplay gimps. But it's that thing of okay, well, I'll wait and see what you can do. But it definitely looks like Collision is a much better watch yeah, sure. than Dynamite. I admit, Dynamite is it's a hard show to watch. I'll be honest, it's, it's oh, I struggle with it. But last time I watched it, I, I actually the last one I watched all the way through was when Orange Cassidy beat Pack for the uh, um the, and I was like, fuck you, I'm out. Like, <laughs> I'm not having that. Like, Pac is one of the best wrestlers in the world. And I saw him job to a fucking gimp who's pretending. Oh, pockets. <laughs> nah, mate. He's a clown. He's, ah. He's a fucking clown. I, don't get me wrong. Orange Cassidy has a place, but not at the top of the fucking card. And that's offensive mm. to me. Like, you know, that you basically... And also, has Pac done anything since? Not really. You know? Well, the thing is with Pac, again, he's there. He's making his money. He's kind of like in and out with the... What's that tech to move with now? The, the six-man tech... He's oh, the trios. He was yeah. the trios jammy for a bit, and then he yeah. dropped them as well, didn't they? So yeah, yeah, because obviously the elite had to win those. I was like, okay, I'm out again. <laughs> I was like, no, yeah. they keep making bad booking decisions. It keeps coming back to the same people that Tony Khan sucks off backstage. I've got no interest in it. So <sighs> no, it is what it is. Anton likes it, though, don't you, Anton? You he love loves it. He loves it, man. <laughs> he's wait. He's waiting for that um, AEW call, and he'll be gone before you know it. But he'll be he'll be on there playing. D Malenko saying, Tony, you're not worthy. You're not worthy. Is that is that true? Is it? <laughs> See, no, <laughs> untrue. 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 <laughs> Fake news. <laughs> um, speaking of AEW and things that were dropped horrifically there, Cody Rhodes beat Dominic Mysterio in the least surprising result of the evening. Yeah, that, you that, know that, what? That's one, that's one that you dropped there. That you dropped the ball. Yeah. That one. You want to uh... pick that for <laughs> For some reason, I thought they'll give it to Dominic just so it's like a, like a you know they'll like Brock, maybe Brock Lesnar might interfere or something like that. Mm. Brock oh. Lesnar would interfere. In I don't. Know. <laughs> I just <laughs> yo more like Nostradamus, I think, mate. Uh, <laughs> uh, this this one, I, I admit, people this kind of threw me off. Proud, you believe that one? Close. <laughs> yeah, no. I thought it was right though. I thought, mm. I thought it was the right match for what it was, wasn't it? I mean, yeah, yeah. You know what? short and sweet. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it was only eight minutes long. Rhea yeah. Ripley did a great job, and by mm-hmm. Rhea Ripley looks so much more of a cut above most of these. It says a lot about the women's division, particularly on Raw, that she's far more intriguing when she's mixing up with the men. So, mm. you know, I and I believe that she could hang with some of the men, not all of them, but I believe that she could. Like for instance, if they still had two or five live, I reckon she could run through that division <laughs> like, easily. I believe that. Like she's capable, she's powerful. She comes across as more than just, oh, I'm a women's wrestler in a women's division. There's much more to that, and that makes her feel like a star. 
And that's mm. what helped get this match along. Of course, um, Dominic, once again, proving just like Logan Paul, you know, he's got him in the palm of his hands. They mm. fucking love to hate him. So he's doing a good job. And if you don't like him, that's because he's doing a good job too. Right? And, he, mm. and he can work, to be fair. Mm. Yeah. So. I heard some rumors about apparently Tessa Blanchard has come to some agreement with WWE that they want to put her and Rhea Ripley. And I'll be honest, I, I don't like, I don't like, I don't know her. I'm not a fan of Tessa Blanchard. After I saw her and Mr. Steroid Freak Brian Cage going 25 minutes back and forth, I said, nah. Brian Cage from me, I was like, I'm done. steroids? <laughs> he's whole, he's, he's eyeball, mate. He's no eyeballs. evidence for that. <laughs> he's eyeballs. <laughs> he's Listen, eyeballs. <laughs> he's eyeballs and muscles. Looks like, he looks like one of them Corinthian football figures that we used to collect. Yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> Massive. For me. His head, he's like, oh, 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 like, fucking, he must have testicles like raisins, that boy. Again, you, you probably know the scene better than me, but a lot of people are saying that, oh, Tessa Blanchard, like, before she did her stupidness and her racist stuff, she's really great. She, you know, she's great, allegedly. Sorry, I'll have to put it out there. Um, well, I guess soon. <laughs> yeah, I gotta say. <laughs> um, yeah, people are saying that, you know, she's a great wrestler. She can wrestle with men now, I think. I don't know about you, Aaron. Do you think that would be a good kind of match? You know, Tessa, I think and... Tessa Blanchard is probably the best women's wrestler not signed to a major promotion. By better far. than Jordan Grace. Uh, I, I Jordan Grace is definitely up there as well. Um, again, Jordan Grace, like I mm. personally like her, but she's another one who's got a lot of attitude issues. Apparently, yeah, that's why as well. And, and also, I, I'm never a fan of wrestlers who just spend their time on Twitter whinging. She seems to do a lot of that. Um, I just, I'm just not. But don't get me wrong, she has incredible shape as well. Amazing look about her, like something entirely different. And if she's happy with that, cool. Like I'm not one of these people who's gonna be like, oh, I don't like what you look like. I don't care. Like, yeah. It doesn't bother me in the slightest. Is your work good? Is your promo good? That's all I give a shit about. Like, but it's that thing of, I feel like Tessa Blanchard. It's more about the, the What makes me laugh is the fear of reputation. What's been levied against her most? A racial incident backstage, which is unacceptable in every fucking locker room in the world. End of story. Like if I saw that, I'd fucking lose my shit. Yeah. But it's that thing of. Okay, so we've got this allegation, but then we also have Austin Theory, who allegedly was, you know, texting underage girls. Matt Riddle, who allegedly yeah. fucking raped somebody. These and yeah. now these are all obviously just allegations, but it's that yeah. thing of what makes Tessa Blanchard so dangerous to you that you won't touch her, but you're happy to keep these talents in here. Mm. Sammy Guevara, you said about he, about he would rape her, um, such that's a bank. Yeah, yeah, just I. Uh, that's just fucking. Yeah. Just immaturity and stupidity is finest. Like, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, sure. People will listen to my podcast and be like, oh, he said some questionable things. Like, nothing. Not that, though. Said, no. Nothing about that. <laughs> <laughs> and also, like, I'm also just some geezer in the British indie scene. Like, you know, I'm not fucking on AW Dynamite every week. Yet. Like, self, Yet, people. Yet. Yet. That, Still, that call comes true. I know. <laughs> if Tony Khan has watched any of my podcasts, that is me. <laughs> <back. laughs> so, wait. I'm fine with that because I like working for real money for real companies. So I'm, I'm going to put it out there, people. So, Aaron, if Tony Khan's to listen, we're going to pay you between 250 and £500,000 a year, mate, to come to AW. Are you going? What What am I doing? What, as videographer? Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Like, because, yeah, at least, yeah for the money. Do you know what? I'm quite. I thought you hate the company. I thought you hate the company. Yeah, but I don't. Yeah, but I don't hate money. <laughs> <laughs> but but you got to actually watch it. You got to be yeah. watching it through the lens the whole show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got to some more worth work. I keep dropping the camera. You got to do dynamite. You got to do collision. You got to do rampage. You got to do is it dark and elevation? You got to do all that stuff. Then I want <laughs> fucking seven figures. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. Otherwise, it ain't happening. No. It's just not happening. To be honest, what I'd love to do if I ever got if if everyone said money's no option, like you can have whatever job you want, let make me the fucking booker. Because the first thing I'll do is I'll turf out 60 guys. I'll be like, right, out now. You're gone. Like you're not being used. Simple as that. There's too many talents in there. It's a joke. It's an absolute joke. So but do you know what? Like who's this is the thing. We're all hypocrites. We're all taking that money. Oh. Like Tony Khan said, Hey, the business, you want to wrestle FTR on Dynamite? Yes, mate. I'm there. <laughs> well, I'm <actually>, there. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. I say Tony, I I say Tony, you check the record books. I did my FA level one and level two at your uh, at your Fulham football club, which I did. Say, so, hey, I'm part of the team. Yeah. There you go. I like Anton. I ride your coattails. What a letdown. <laughs> coaching badges. I ride I ride the coattails going in. <laughs> yeah, he did it. He did it. He did, I don't need to. I, he went to Fulham. Yeah, I worked. Enough. I worked near Fulham. No, it's actually Moscow Park, mate. It's actually Moscow Park, so you want to get it right. 
want to get it right because he knows your line. My stepdad's a hardcore Fulham fan. So Co- I, coach I, I, me. I, coach me before the interview. <laughs> before, before we go meet Tony, coach me. But you're going to blow a contract if you say that, oh, you went to Fulham. <laughs> you're the, you said it. I said I, I said, I said, I worked for Fulham Football Club at the exactly. training ground in Mutsburg Park. Yeah, exactly. You didn't coach me, did you? You got to give me better. You used to call it Fulham. I call it Fulham. I'm not People, even a football fan. Anton's not a sports fan at all. I Apart from football. wrestling, he doesn't like boxing. He doesn't like UFC. I do like boxing. Like I do like UFC. <laughs> all the ones I do like. I don't like football. I don't like... You can, you can list them. That's cool. Fair oh, enough. Uh, moving on. Um, yeah. The women... <laughs> The women's Money in the Bank ladder match was won by the woman who should have won it and the woman that I said would win it, EO Sky. Um, so, and frankly, she's right. Oh, by the way, uh, I thought this match sucked, which is going to really upset people. I thought it was botchy. It was soft. Yeah. By the way, I thought the men's match from a work standpoint wasn't great either. I thought yeah. it was too sloppy. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. By the way, the fuck it, we didn't mention it. When he, he gave um, Logan Paul the Spanish fly, oh, like, yeah. he almost <laughs> fucking killed the guy. Ooh. I was just like... Like Logan, it, it, yeah. You know what? By the way, Logan Paul, smart fucking worker, rolled through onto his shoulder. Did you see that? Ricochet yeah. spiked himself because he's a fucking mark. So I agree. You know, like, <laughs> and I really respected that because, like, mm. I thought, you know what? Fair play to you because your fucking livelihood, your health is more important than taking a stupid bump. Which, as soon as they didn't get it smooth, I would have yeah. been like, nah, just fucking exactly. Yeah. You see, Anton, they, they overcommit. They Don't commit to it. So we're gonna, yeah. We have no, to do it. Stupid. Just like, fucking mm. what they should have done is just go, oh fuck it, let's just jump normally. Fight it off or something. Like yeah. DLC style, and that yeah. would have been absolutely yeah. fine. Don't, don't, don't put, fly. don't put that yourself really on fucking piss with it. And we have to be, you know, fairly, um, shall we say, um, fair. We can't have double standards because if AEW done that, we'd be going fuck. Oh it. yeah. And the fact is that was a joke spot. It should not. And if it was going to be done, it should have been practiced properly, and they should have known how to do it. And as soon as it went wrong, they were like, no, we need to have a safety yeah. precaution here so we can take the bump safely. Because if yeah. that goes wrong and Logan mm. Paul breaks his neck, oh, that's it. Him loose. Yeah. Mm. And he did get a massive cut, didn't he? Like he hated. Mm. He did it. Yeah. Oh, by the way, shout out to the person who threw a bottle of Prime at Logan Paul while he was on the floor. Did you see that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Flying past the camera, I was like, "Here's eight quid for your shit energy drink." Fuck you. <laughs> I thought that was quite funny. Um. Yeah. Very good stuff. EO Sky wins the women's Money in the Bank. Both of you. Uh... Have- and Trish Stratus, uh, to her credit, took some fucking whopper bumps in this match, which she did, did not have to take whatsoever. No. I was very impressed. But I thought this match was super, super sloppy. And the only spot that I remember thinking, oh, shit, that's pretty epic, was when um, uh, Zelina Vega, they said it was a code red. It was more like a sunset bomb on Zoe yeah. Stark. Zoe Stark took that like a fucking champ. <laughs> so good, in fact. Anton left. Um, you know what? Anton's leaving. <laughs> He's I'm, still here. I'm still here. When he was like, right, Trish Stratus hasn't won money in the bank. I'm going home. I'm, I've, I've lost three, I've three, three matches in a row. I'm done. I'll be honest. Like, for myself, I don't know what it is. Again, people may... I know you guys going like, oh, I don't I don't like women's wrestling. I do. But you know what it is? It's to me where... It's like they're overcompensating. You're doing too much. that like You don't need to do too much. We know you're good. We know you're better... Than the women in the, in the early two thousands. I mean, okay, not all of them. Some in the nineties, but like I said, I watched this. I watched this match, and I was just thinking, this is garbage, man. I thought this is rubbish. It wasn't a good I, match. I, I didn't like it at all. No, but, I didn't like it. I I remember what I was. I popped for the end. I thought the ending was great. I thought the handcuff spot was good. Yeah, yeah. Love that, and mm. I love the fact that Eo Sky climbed over Bailey. Like a real good, like kind of like image. Really great mm. symbology there, and she looked fantastic. And the fact that. Bailey and Becky are just kind of like, you know, abject, not even trying to fight each other because, like, fuck, we've both been played here, which is very cool. Um, mm-hmm. But other than that, it felt like, oh, I had to endure 15 minutes of botches to get to the point that I really enjoyed because it was very botchy. It was very sloppy. And it's getting to that point now where it's like, there has been a lot of these matches. You are running out of ideas. Yeah. But see, the thing is, for me, at least with Trish, She's a name. There's, you know, she has weight. It's history behind her. Again, you know, it's maybe because I didn't watch NXT, so I, I don't, you know, I don't have that connection with Eos Sky. But it's like uh, she came I'm, up. She's not one for the casuals. Oh, I totally agree. No, I, 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 fans are like, who the fuck's that? No, yeah, it's fine. Again, she's getting probably a decent work in that thing. But it's just like, you just salty because yeah. I'm the only one who predicted Eos Sky. Yeah, whatever. probably yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but to be fair. <laughs> To be fair, I think I, I wanted Trish to win just so she could have maybe that one more run. And the thing is, I don't see Eel Sky beating Rhea Ripley or who's the other champion? 
Yeah. I don't, I've, I don't, again, that's I don't, not for me is the, the dream match. No. Oh, Dave, Dave Meltzer's bashing off to that one for sure, man. <laughs> <laughs> He's not wrong either. That's what I love about it. He's not wrong at all. Hey, 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 hey. Him and Kenny Omega are going to have a right little fucking watch party over that one, isn't they? They're gonna <laughs> the party, Do you think that'd be a good match? Eo uh, and those Scott? two, from a worker standpoint, like, and if they let them actually just go full fucking stardom style, which they have done, Oof, yeah, knockout. I think that yeah. could actually make a lot of people sort of turn their eyeballs to the Japanese star more. Because I tell you mm. what, oh, by the way, Shinsuke Nakamura abjectly boring, and the crowd did not give a fuck about him in the men's, which I have said now for like four or five years. Nobody cares. You know what it is with him? I Ten think entrance, that's all it is. Yeah. I think he's done. I think he's again. It sounds bad. He's come to WWE. He come to WWE. Was on NXT. Came to the main roster. I personally think, even though I like AJ Styles, him not beating him at WrestleMania killed him. Him not being WrestleMania, I think that killed him. And I hope that they don't go the same way with Cody. I kind of feel like Cody needs some sort of redemption down the line. Shinsuke never had redemption. He never won the title. He never kind of went back up after that again. Because he was never good enough to win it. But but again. I, I, I don't mind. Him. He's look, not. He's not good enough. He's look. he's terrible on the mic. By the way, he's like he is like a lot. Most of the Japanese talents are, to be fair. So it's not just him. They are so borderline racist in the way they behave. <laughs> they, you know, they fucking. So I work for a company called BCD, and we have a guy called Tainty Mister Twist who pretends to be somewhat Japanese. And at yeah. one point, one point, he shouted to. The, now this is in front of one hundred and ten people, not one hundred and ten thousand. But you know, he's he's turned around to the crowd and he's going. Oh, Nakamura Shinsuke, like just taking a pick. <laughs> like, that's funny. That's funny in a little hole it, on a fucking TV show that two million people watch. Not no, a little bit no. too on the nose, like a bit silly. Mm. Um, yeah, I just yeah, but that's the thing with EO Sky. I love the fact that she's. They haven't done that with her. She's very kind of quiet assassin like, and I mm. much prefer that. And they've picked the right time because she's stuck around with Bailey and. The crowd responded extremely well to it, which tells you that they've done a good job of building it, even though she's not somebody outside of the hardcore audience that people would necessarily know or appreciate in terms of work rate. True. Mm. Well, again, you go with the crowd, don't you? You go with the response, and ultimately, yeah. the crowd mm. pretty hard for that, more so than they probably would. For... By the way, if Becky Lynch had won this, I would have oh, turned, oh, turned it the fuck off. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be honest. I was just saying, please, but if anybody but Becky, so please, Becky. You're, you're not for me. You're not for me. You're, again, like I said to you, like I said last time, she's a fake tough chick. She's a fake tough chick. Again, we, we, mm-hmm. we're tough. We, we, we're tough. We've got around tough people. You know tough when you see it. She's not a badass. She's not, you know what? She's not even a boss. She's, she's not, not a boss. Worker either. Like, I could, if she was like a really, really good one, all of her best matches, when people say this was her best match, this was her best match, you can isolate the individual who worked with her, who made it, like Bianca Belair, for instance, made her stand out far more. When she wrestles somebody who's a little bit lower on the spectrum, the match gets always brought down. It never gets brought up to her level. Never. But you, you know what it is? I think, and I know people are going to say, oh, Gabe, I'm, I'm whinging. You got punched yeah. in the nose. You got <laughs> punched in the nose like many people do. I've been punched in the nose. Many people have been punched in the nose. It doesn't show. Oh, oh, that's true. <laughs> All you did, basically, you just didn't sell it. You didn't sell it. You smiled. And then Dave Meltzer and Alfred basically come to their pants and said, she's a tough chick. She's a tough chick. And all you sheep up there believed it and just kind of followed suit. That's what it was. And also you may have Seth Rollins as well, which I, I, I guess did help <laughs> help as well. So I think yeah, the, yeah. Man, the man thing is like so overdone now for me. Um, uh, yeah, Anton, you happy with EO Sky winning? Or did you really yeah. think that should have been the one? Oh, he didn't care. He no, didn't care. I, I, I didn't care. I, I was going <laughs> to... <laughs> <laughs> when, when you was when you was laying out last last time when we did the predictions, and I was thinking, yeah, that makes a lot of sense there. Like, I could see it. I was, I was kind of going for a bit of an out there pick. And then, like, Gabe had jumped, <laughs> jumped the gun and got it, before, got it in before I did. But it, it, it was one of those I couldn't really see a clear winner. Mm. Uh, but when you was laying it out, I was thinking you probably got that now. And logic, lo, and be- lo and behold, yeah, yeah, it, it was the one. So no, I'm not- in that match either mm. needs it or he's really like Zelina Vega proved 
Yeah, she's very beautiful, obviously, and I like mm. the gear. Also, get, getting a flip flop out. I know it's a you know a cultural <laughs> thing, so I'm yeah. not shitting on it. But come on, you're at the top of a ladder and hitting some of a flip flop. It's like, yeah, what what the fuck is that? Like, is yeah. it, no, it was nice at Puerto Rico. That was a nice nod mm. to it, and the crowd went mental. So keep it there where the culture belongs. Yeah. We're trying to for, you know, ah, it, yeah, it's a callback, and you know, Michael. Oh, by yeah. the way, Michael Cole was abjectly terrible during this show. He <sighs> was carried by Wade Barrett, in my opinion. Mm. Like, I thought he was rotten. I think Michael Cole lost, lost his lost his smile about ten years ago, mate. He lost it ten years ago. He's. I think JBL was personally. I think JBL was much better than him, but obviously JBL's absolutely JBL sucks. Abject donkey balls. What? He's <laughs> fucking awful. Like, you like. You didn't mate, like JBL? Mate, mate, JBL fingers young boys in the shower, allegedly. So I've got no fucking time for that cunt. Like, no, fuck that. Like, JBL is also, JBL got knocked out by Joey Styles, bro. I'm not, I'm not taking that. He's not hard, man. Is it, uh, was it, was it Yoshi Totsu? Yoshi Totsu? Or Taxi, what his name is? Yoshi, oh, Yoshi Tatsu. Fucking yeah. the one that AJ Styles almost murdered. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's really funny actually. Um, like I, I, we all take the piss out of Yoshi Tatsu, but he won the AJPW tag titles with Joel Redmond, didn't he? Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's so random. Oh, well. yeah. yeah, him and Joel are like a really strong tag team in Japan, which is very mm. cool. Uh, up until quite recently, so mm. you know, he obviously found his level, but yeah, mm. I personally like JBL has done a lot of great. Fit. Don't get me wrong, good at getting heat. Thought he was great as the manager. Oh, yeah. Corbin, um, but from a personal standpoint, I think he's detestable, absolutely detestable. I mean, even I'm sorry, but oh, if there are strong allegations from a number of people that you sexually molested them in a shower when they were like, I'm sorry, I'm out. Wow, yeah. I admit, I, I didn't hear, I didn't hear that. I know he's the bully people, but it's in Edgy's it... autobiography. It's oh, him. yeah, did, oh, yeah, wow. he did mention about that. Yeah, uh, uh, Brian uh, Kendrick, Paul London, a number of people come out and said about it, and it's like, mm, don't like that. In that case, I was going to say, I was going to defend him, but after hearing that, no, I can't defend him. I was going to say, people can change. Yeah, you, you might but... be in a trouble defending that. Yeah. Kind of <laughs> yeah, no. um, but, you know, I personally think Wade Barrett is phenomenal on commentary. I love that. Really? And, yeah, I think he's brilliant. I think he's mm. I think he's one of the best colour commentators in recent memory. I mean, he's excellent. I thought it was an NWA at one point. Was it, was that a, a while ago? Because I, I remember nah, being at NWA. Yes, at that, he, did, he never left WWE, did he? Like, no, I, he, I, he I did bad news Barrett. Maybe he did. I, I he thought did. It was I, think, I think he might be on the. Yeah. On the hmm. I remember him being on something else. Yeah. yeah. I remember seeing it end away for a little while when uh, Baron Corbin. Didn't he also Bobby do Corbin. the sport kind of commentary as well? Yeah, he did. He did. Yeah. He did. Uh, yeah, like which like was a hmm. good fit, I thought. Because but the thing is as well, he adds genuine credibility, which is one thing JBL did do. He added credibility hmm. because it's like you know, oh, I actually trust your word because you've been a champion and done all this different stuff, and True. Wade Barrett was relatively successful, and also. We don't get to see him on commentary for no. pay per views very often. This was the one mm. time I think this year where he's done a full pay per view, and obviously he was going to because he's the UK guy. Yeah. But I felt yeah. like I feel like he's got a lot more value than he gets, and I feel sorry for him because he's sat next to that abject moron. I, I, I find Michael Cole to be insufferable. In I agree, I agree. He, he, he's very patronizing. Very I'd patronizing. love to see Mauro Ronaldo replace him, but you know, unfortunately, Mauro Ronaldo is very sensitive. So JBL. Mm-hmm. JBL, yeah, but JBL would have to be league commentator, not a chance. No, I'm saying JBL because obviously uh, Mauro Nala, JBL. Yeah, no, sucks. that is very true. Yeah, and also yeah. um, he's not the only one, is he? Uh, Cody, um, uh, Corey Graves upset him as well, didn't he? Maybe really? Twitter for a little. Yeah, Corey Graves said. Uh, so Renee, uh, you remember when they had Renee on commentary in NXT for a little while? Uh, yeah. I remember Corey Graves put out a tweet going, "Really enjoying this. Shame that I can't hear Renee that much because someone else is screaming over her." Oh, slap on the back of his head. Slap that fool, man. Ronaldo deleted his Twitter overnight and had a meltdown and had like three months off. Corey like, Gray, is that fake CM Punk? The fake CM Punk with Carmelo? Yeah, yeah, that one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that one. You can say that, but he's very good at color commentary. He's another one who's mm. good at that. Their color commentators are better than their league commentators, in my opinion. You know what? I wish you told me that before this pay-per-view. I would have waited outside my the bank and just waited for him. Allegedly. What, just, just what? Just to upset him? Yeah, just... <laughs> Right the chest. Yeah. Just right the yeah. chest, allegedly. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. So, yeah, Heo Sky wins. Uh, Gabe's favourite world heavyweight champion successfully defended his title against Finn Balor. Shock. Uh, there was the tease of a cash-in, which distracted mm. Finn Balor enough for <laughs> Seth Rollins to win. Um, yeah. And then, sort of, Damien just disappears. <laughs> you know, like, mm. It is like... So obviously, I'm I'm expecting a bit of shenanigans on Raw. Finn Balor's unhappy with Damien and teasing this idea of a breakup because you've got. Have you noticed this as well? Finn Balor and Dominic keep taking L's, not really 
living up to what they're doing, whereas Rhea and Damian Priest are actually kind of getting the job mm. done and they're in main event caliber matches. So I'm assuming we're going to get a break of sorts and that might facilitate Damian Priest going after Roman Reigns. Mm. But um, what do you think of the match? Me personally, eh, it was like, it kind of went, again, I knew Steph was going to win away, but I don't know what it is. It's like, the match wasn't bad, but it wasn't, it was a workers' like, match, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, it was a like, match okay. for people who enjoy good work. Yeah, yeah. And the thing with Priest coming out, I thought, I know why you're doing it, obviously to, to you know to build a scene between you and Finn. But to me, it's like uh, Finn Balor for me is a much better worker than Seth Rollins. Oh, by far. Is that, that's <laughs> not like I don't think that's really that unfair. That's not that unfair no. for opinion, is it? Like I watched that match and I felt like Finn Balor, from a work standpoint alone, carried him. I liked his mm. entrance, liked his gear. Actually, I thought he was quite cool. Um, I was I was a bit gutted. I wanted the crowd to be more behind him than Seth Rollins, but they're so enamoured with the Ooh. yeah sheep again. Sheep. Yeah, it is a little bit because if he didn't have that, I don't think he'd get. He's boring. This is guy it? is boring. I yeah, but, I'm... yeah, but he goes ha a lot, so people like that apparently. Hey, because he's back. He's oh, banging. I saw projects. He's married to Becky Lynch. He, you he, think he, that's he... why he's as over as he is? Because I think that's what it. I swear to you, that's what it is. It must be. I think it's more a Ty Dillinger thing where we're enamoured with the gimmick, but once that... Eventually, that will run out. Uh, to be fair, it's been going a while and it hasn't, but it's mm. got to at some point. And when, once it plateaus, I think you could be in trouble again. Because how many times are you going to reinvent yourself? He keeps having all these little pseudo gimmicks and, yeah. you know, yeah. different things. Like, over the pandemic, he had... He was, like, the Monday Night Messiah and, you know, mm-hmm. he took out Rey Mysterio's eyeball, which was a ping-pong ball. Come on, bruv. Like, you know, that was AW level, the carny. But it was that thing of... You know, and then and then Ray comes back and he's like, oh, I can only see out of one eye. Oh, my eyeball's fine now. Fuck off. Like, <laughs> I had it reattached. That's what I, I want that, you Doctor. Out and you put it back in, isn't it? Like, yeah. He's not Vader, is he, against Stan Hansen? Let's be honest. Yeah. That's a real, that's a fucking hard man. The game's oh, yeah. mm. socket detached and fucking oh. cracked on and carried on for another 20 odd minutes and they mm. were kicking the shit out of each other. Mm. Oh, much. That's strong much. style. Mm. I, I, again, Anton, I don't know about you, but for me, again, the, the match went the way it was going to be. Yeah, it was a foregone conclusion, really. It felt totally... I think the Damien Priest thing was the only thing that added a little bit of... But even then, I think you kind of... You, you knew. Like, yeah, it, even if they'd have done that, it would have been like, okay, Seth Rollins retains. It was almost like... Because they even referenced on commentary that it's... He might do what Seth Rollins did at WrestleMania. He's kind of like, t- make it a triple threat. Yeah. Like, you felt then, like, it'd be a little bit of extra excitement, but... You'd almost see that as that's another device for Seth to retain. You, it was almost like you just couldn't see it happening that Seth's going to yeah. lose this one at the moment. It's like it's definitely if it stayed one on one, it was like a total Seth Rollins not losing this one. We, we, yeah, we said that when we did the predictions, like foregone conclusion of all the matches there. It's like that one was just cut and dry. Seth's going to retain. That's how I felt about it. Do you reckon Priest will cash it at WrestleMania at this point? Awesome. I'd have thought before. I would have thought he'd go for it before. I but you I never know. know. How long they plan on, I think because Seth Rollins is the first, even though mm. they've had like God knows how many different versions of Big Gold, mm. uh, I think they would probably let him run with it for a quite a while. So probably yeah. have it until at least Mania and then potentially drop it. Uh, it depends. Maybe he drops it at Mania and then Priest cashes in immediately and takes it. And it's like, oh, it's, it's a big moment. But I would prefer, much, much prefer Priest to cash in on Roman. Because so, mm. even yeah. if even if we're not as enamoured with Damian Priest, I'm kind of with you, Gabe. I feel like he's great talent, good looking guy. Mm. You know, he's decent enough on the mic, but he does he does. It's ironic, isn't he? He kind of draws on Razor Ramon a lot in his yeah. life. And ironically enough, Razor Ramon never really kind of got to that next point. He always kind of felt like a great IC champion. Arguably, Razor Ramon had a higher ceiling. Um, yeah, but then because obviously they just need to go with it. Well, his own personal demons didn't help, did he? He was a bit of a yeah. train wreck, you know, in terms of his personal life, and that didn't help, which is a shame because as a more focused guy, he probably might have made it. But, mm. you know, I know he made it somewhat in WCW, but that was when it was just, come on, mate. Well, <laughs> you can't disregard, though, the USWA Unified World of Rich title because he, he was he was a champion there. So Ask, ask every single person <laughs> in the O2 arena from the last weekend if they know what that is. <laughs> And I reckon you'll be lucky to get 2%. <laughs> well, Scott, I tried, to, I tried to, you know, include you in the world title as basically saying you're a world champion, but I'm being told that no. 
I, he... I personally, as a young guy, felt like Razor Ramon was good enough to be WWE champion. Yeah. Oh, easily. Yeah, yeah I agree. Yeah. Uh, I don't think Damien Priest is quite there yet, but yeah. there is time. There's always time. And there's many guys that we've seen where we thought, mm, not for me. When Dominic, Hill. when Dominic Mysterio was with Ray, I thought he was abjectly the most boring person on the roster. And now mm. I think he's fucking hilarious. So there is always that opportunity to grow and branch out, but you've got to find that. Damien Priest needs that extra edge, which makes him feel like a legitimate world champion. He hasn't found that yet for me. Do you think maybe... Okay, I know the news about Carlito come back to the is there. Do you, you reckon putting Carlito with him? Or what kind of oh, create? Yeah, but the thing is, like, you've already got the by the way, the LWO sucks. Oh, of course it does. It's such a bad stable. They you know what's cool? Cartels. Yeah. Not happy go lucky, colorful Mexicans going, oh, hi guys, how's it going? That's fucking <laughs> boring. I don't care. Like when they were, you know, Legado del Fantasma still had a long way to go, but you felt like, you know. If you watched NXT, they did these really cool like cartel versus mafia things with mm, uh, uh, Tony D'Angelo. And although it was a bit cheap and a bit watered down, it felt like it had potential. You watch mm. them in these really cool settings. They're in these nightclubs and they got the suits on and he's sitting there with a cigar and he's like, you know, he's kind of, he felt like a, you know, a Mexican cartel hitman. It was very cool. And now mm. it's just like, ha ha, color, Rey Mysterio is in touch. He needs to turn on Rey Mysterio very quickly, Santos. Yeah. Otherwise, he is going to be another one of these guys who is totally forgotten and nobody will give a shit about him it's a shame because i feel like he mm. has much more star power than we get to see and they did a great job and just like Shayna baszler he felt like an assassin in nxt gets mm. on the main roster and whoever gets it's probably vince gets his hands on him hi oh, he's brown he's a mexican he's funny and, you know, it's, it, and all of a sudden it just changes really quickly um i don't like lw i think it sucks dick and obviously the original lwo had mad star power this does not no no they were a classic in WCW. They really were. It was such a big deal to see something like that. And it was the first time that we saw a Latino faction in mainstream Western American wrestling. You know, that was a big deal. And now it's like, okay, it just feels so forced. Really, really forced. But um, yeah, no, that's neither, that's neither here nor there. I do like the idea of Priest with Carlito, but I feel like just as the two of them, it's not enough there for me. They need something else. Well, the thing is, I also heard about Chavo Guerrero. I was like, nope, Chavo, stay away from me. Stay away from Chavo. Bless you, but no, please don't. Don't do it. No. Yeah, no. And also, Chavo hasn't been relevant on a mainstream product for quite a few years now. It just feels like it, people would pop initially, I think, a little bit, but not that much. And then within three weeks, they're like, okay, next, please. It's got mm. such a small value to it. The main event is the one that I really want to hear from you guys about because you're a tag team. You're a fluid mm. tag team. You know tag team wrestling and anyway else. Now, for me, this is the absolute pinnacle of storytelling for a tag mm. team match. I thought yeah. this was an absolute masterpiece. I would mm -hmm. have given this five stars. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I thought it was a brilliant match. And, and it really, like I said, it was a good match. But really, when it came down to that final bit where they did the final sort of stare down and Michael Cole saying, is this like sort of like the... The, the civil the civil war is gonna like come to it and it's like the whole from that point on it really felt so many sort of false finishes you were just gripped like the whole the the match was good so it's fun but once they come into that final stretch I think that was that was brilliant with the near falls knocking the ref out it's like the the one D they had so many moments in that that um the spike and the the spear mm. together you yeah, I, thought awesome. that, I thought that was done yeah. like how he kicked out of that and then yeah. Jay kicked out of a, a separate spear it was like yeah Really, had you had you there, but they didn't feel it didn't feel over like oh just doing moves again, moves for the sake of moves. It was like these were big moments and it really sort of like built the crescendo to a finally like that big payoff with Jay Uso actually pinning Roman Reigns. It's like and that felt like a massive, a massive deal. deal. Yeah, massive deal. Three and a half years since he's mm. been in any kind of match, and that's the first time he's been pinned in three and a half yeah. years. Wild. Yeah, that delivered in a big way. I think for me, again, like you said, it delivered. Mm. But you know what? I know people are gonna say I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm a what's the word I'm looking for? I'm a party pooper. <laughs> but I believe they popped their cherry. It's like, yes, you beat him, but you beat him in a tag match, and it's a big deal. Don't get me wrong. But when you now face him at SummerSlam, can you get it done? Yes, mm. I expect you to beat him in a tag match. It sounds bad. But I, it's, 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 it's stupid. I expect this tag team who's been with each other for years and know inside out to beat Solo and Reigns. 
Mm. Expect it. it but it's like, it's to actually no, pin Roman Reigns no, is the big thing. No, he, no, I know even that. he hasn't actually been pinned. No, I'm saying so I'm, get I, pin again, on I, I can say that. I know that. And I think mm. it is a big deal. But it's that thing where it's, okay, yes, it's been you know three and a half years, no one's pinned, pinned, pinned him. Fine. But that thing for me is, okay, well, it's so, again, the first time he should have been pinned for me is, okay, when he lost the title, if that makes sense. It's just like, okay, you beat him in the tag team. Yeah, it's a big deal and everything. But now SummerSlam, I know you're not winning. So it's like, yeah, it's like a come up, but then it's like, yeah, but you see when it's, you see when it's just you two fighting for the big one? You still yeah, do it. So I, I'd, it. I'd say to you, though, what what do you think? Do you think there'd be more chance that he's going to win if Roman and Solo beat him in the tag match and he didn't get that pin? Would you be thinking, oh, now more invested in their SummerSlam match? You, you wouldn't, would you? You have to you have to give it something. At least, at least he's had that. Because you're yeah. not gonna if that's the match that's happening one way or the other, it's makes it's better that he's actually got a pin on Roman Reigns than like, oh, they just lost a tag match and now he's gonna fight Roman Reigns. You've got to at least yeah, like that's what the direction they're going, that was the best way they could go there. Fair enough. Fair enough. That's how I look at it. It's a visual medium, isn't it? Mm. No, no, of course, of course. Roman Reigns pinned by Jay Uzo. If you don't see that and then you go yeah. on the SummerSlam with what we assume is gonna be Jay versus yeah. Roman. Yeah, that's what like, you figure. People are like, why do I like you couldn't win a tag match, which is yeah. Neutral. One thing I loved about this is it's a real statement of intent of tag team wrestling still fucking matters. Uh, yeah, one. I love that. And I, yeah, I, I, tag team wrestling. This mm. is a big fucking win for them. Mm -hmm. I was thinking that because that goes something me and Gabe talked about before. You know, when we said about two singles wrestlers always beat a tag team because they're bigger, <laughs> bigger level. It's like, but the tag team cohesion. The yeah, that should be like okay on paper. Yeah, Jey Uso and Jimmy Uso against Roman Reigns or even Solo. Maybe not, but when you put them two together against a team like Roman and Solo that are good, but not a proper polished tag team, you, that tag team is like the, the advantage goes to the Usos, and it should prove that. And I think, like I said, that was a statement because they actually won, and it's like they've been made such a big deal, and they're not oh, even yeah. the champions. No. Those aren't the champions yet. They're a massive deal. They're main event, a pay-per-view. They're getting the big win. And then you've got on the same side, you've got Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens really making a big deal in sort of main event matches defending about. And they feel like, even though they're two singles guys, they feel like a unit and a team. So it's like they really have got something going on for the first time in a long time, it feels like, for the tag team division. And it's actually, yeah, main evented a like one night of WrestleMania. You're getting tag team wrestling at the forefront, even if it's not for the championship. But they're really building up that Usos are a tag team. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, they really make that point of like the greatest tag team, perhaps the greatest tag team of all time. It's like you don't even have to be the champions now to be a big deal. It reminds you of the days of like, yeah, like Legion of Doom mm. were a big deal, even if they weren't the champs. It's like that's the Legion of Doom, the Road Warriors. Hmm. No, <laughs> that's a, that's no, a, no, uh, no, no. It's, it's you know it's it's not that. I think I think like I said because I watch a lot of sports. Mm. To me, again, the, the visual is great and it's good. And I think because I in my mind I know he's not going to beat him. Well, I know he's going to beat him one on one. So it's like you're basically getting everyone up, basically just to flat. I, I don't know. Mm. <laughs> It's a weird one. I can say it's, yeah. it's a weird one because to me it's like yes, it's kind of a last loss for you, isn't it? Because even if he wins or loses, you know that he's going to look probably. Yeah. Lose. But maybe Priest cashes in at SummerSlam. Mm. Uh, Uzo's fucking lose their shit, decimate Roman Reigns. You know, all, all kinds is, of hell breaks loose. You might have Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn out there as well. Um, one thing it does do is free up the Usos again to go after legitimate tag gold as well. Like mm. after this is done, which is nice. Um, but for the, it doesn't detract from the match. Paul, that little moment where Paul Heyman says he wants your kids to mm. acknowledge him, not you. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I love that. Awesome little fella. I was like, and you saw mm. Roman's face go from like I don't know what I'm saying. You fucking what, mate? Mm -hmm. oh, yes. Yeah. Like he's such a master yeah. manipulator. That's good mm. shit. That is. That's yeah. really good. Paul Heyman is the best at what he does. Like there's yeah. nobody who can touch him. Um, and he's just that. It's real shame because I feel like he's become really backseated by a lot of this stuff. We don't yeah. hear much of him, but then mm. when it counts, he delivers a moment like, that's all he said during the match. Mm. We didn't hear anything yeah. else really from him. He was just kind of, you know, his usual facial expressions, which are great. His Hitchcock. look of sheer yeah. hor horrified whenever, like, Roman's about to be pinned. He's like, no, he, like, it's so mm. good. He, he's such a fucking snake. I love it. He's so mm. good at it. Yeah, uh, I can't help but fucking adore. I watch him uh, ad nauseum because my real goal in wrestling is to be a long term manager and I watch Paul Heyman religiously and I look at those facial expressions and I would apply so much of that to myself being mm. a manager uh, and the fleeting opportunities I have had I've used that kind of stuff because that's that's the for me the textbook of how it's done 
he is by far and away the best manager in the world. No one's close. I was going to ask, do you think Paul will go back to Lesnar? Or no? You reckon that's, that's completely done now? I Potentially. Because I'm, I'm, hear, I'm hearing that apparently when obviously he's done with Roman and everything. I think well, Lesnar has far more appeal when he has Paul Heyman in his corner. But yeah. the problem is that Paul Heyman seemed never, it never felt like Paul Heyman can manipulate Lesnar like he can Roman Reigns in yeah. a storyline. Whereas, mm. you know, with, so the next time around, if they're going to do it again, I want to see Lesnar manipulated more by Paul Heyman as opposed to mm. just kind of being there to motivate him more than anything else. Because Lesnar's kind of now stood outside on his own quite a bit. And yeah. we see him now as an individual, you know, cowboy undertaker kind of look and all this sort of stuff farm boy that's kind of just you know he's just running you know rampant doing whatever fuck he pleases now whereas mm. paul Heyman kind of kept it more in check because he was more of a menacing kind of type so mm. it's that thing of i want him to kind of almost reel lesnar back in a bit so paul Heyman has more value if he's going to go back mm. with him yeah great match though i i honestly thought this was yeah. as close to five star like i'm not one of these people like if i was melter i would probably give five stars out once every four or five years like he used to <laughs> Because yeah. I just feel like not many matches truly are five star. Yeah. This for me was the best tag team match I've seen in an extraordinarily long time. Um, I thought it was fucking phenomenal, uh, and the storytelling helps. The bloodline storyline for me is the best storyline in the last twenty years. Yeah, it's it's just that length of time that's and it's never been it's never been bad. It's like it's my favorite since Rock Austin. I haven't been mm. this in. I was going to say, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, even Rock Austin, there was no, like, it wasn't always, it was a lot of it was just on a rivalry sometimes, wasn't it? It's like, this has just been continuous, like, so many, yeah, and there's so many, like, bringing, like, bringing Sami Zayn in at one point, and, you know, like, Solo Sokoa, it's like, all these different, like, wheels that keep turning, it started off just being Roman and Jay, and it's like, yeah, because we're going back now, almost three years, isn't it, since they started it, and it's like, that long-term going on during the pandemic. Yeah, and it's like, there's been no let up, like, obviously, because it's a difference because it's an all-encompassing storyline, it's not just, okay, like Roman and Jay for three years. It's like it, it started off with them, it branched off into a little summit, they're on the same team. It's got so many sort of like layers to it that it's that consistent. They've been able to, basically that storyline, it's not just a storyline, it's a whole, it's like a whole universe that they spawned amongst yeah. themselves with the bloodline. They, even like of, they are on an island, literally. Mm. Like they call yeah. it the island of relevancy and it is. it does feel like they're on an island by themselves in WWE. It's kind of yeah. like nobody else can get in. If you're in yeah. it, like Sane and Owens and those guys, yeah. Great. But if you're not, you're not getting in, and you're not getting on this level. You're just you're not, not like part Seth, of the big. Like, yeah, you're not part of the big. Like, after watching that, I was like, fucking Seth Rollins, like didn't mm. even have any business being on the card compared to no. this. Like, no. It's not even close. Um, you know, and Roman. By the way, what do we think about the outrage on Twitter today? You probably haven't seen it because you guys. No. Have- life but <laughs> I've been on twitter for five minutes today mm. right because luckily for me a few promoters are interested and that's nice but mm. i saw the young bucks were trending so i thought okay can't wait to see this hopefully they've said something stupid or whatever uh and literally hundreds of thousands of aw marks losing their mind saying that you know roman reigns and oh so they the main argument is the usos could never have a match like the young bucks did with hangman page and kenny omega the argument is i know it's comical isn't it like even even if you like absolutely hate wwe and you have you know no fucking objectivity to it you can still watch that match and say that is an excellent quality storytelling piece of work and they're like yeah it's shit young bucks are better which is ludicrous because man like, honestly, if you have even the slightest idea of what wrestling is, you cannot say that the Usos are not one of the best tag teams of the last 30 years. That is ludicrous. To say That's... that Young Bucks are better than them... Go on, go. Go on, go. Humorous as fuck to me. I, I, know, I know you won't, you won't defend, them with the, <laughs> defend using the Young Bucks, but I don't think Gabe agrees with that. Go on, Gabe. Let's hear it. Say again, sorry. Say About again. the Usos. He says we're the greatest tag teams of the last 30 years. Oh, oh, oh no, I know, no, I know, no. I know you're not going to use no, the Young Bucks as, as, the, as the feds, but I don't think you're going to throw the business in there now. <laughs> I, would have, over. I would rather see Stone Cold and Undertaker's tag champs over the Usos. I mean, again, nothing against the Usos. Again, I don't know what it is for me. I think. Because yeah, I that's a weird they... comparison, isn't it? Because we're looking at solely tag team divisions. Like, do you think they were tag team champions in, in a tag team division, weren't they, Anton? <laughs> what did no, what did I add on? What did yeah. not? But is Took there weeks, a yeah. body of work based on being great no, tag teams? I don't, I don't. He's been, yeah, he's been, he's been. 
being facetious as well. Yeah. But you know what it is? I think, what was it? I think, was it a couple of years ago? I think Anton went through a list of like the, the, the five top tag teams. Oh, I think you had the Undisputed Era. Players. You yeah. had uh, the Usa for what, what? Of a Heart Foundation, of a Legion of Doom, of all these great teams. Again, Mm. Maybe these guys are better because they're. Yeah, but that's um, that's what I'm saying is since that era, these yeah, have taken. yeah, and and we've had that discussion before. I've said like I can see, I can definitely see an argument for that because they have been considered like you and they've since always TLC, had two since separate. Since TLC, yeah. that, you remember Edge and Christian yeah. Dudley's mm-hmm. since then. The since Usos, then, yeah, I don't think there's an argument that anyone is better than the Usos. Because they've had that two different periods. They had that sort of like with the face paint and the and that was a good like good tag team run for them. Then they reinvented their look and style. And they've just been consistently like obviously it was Quality New Day. Matches as well. Yeah, New Day Quality was there, sort of like com- is astonishing yeah. compared. By the way, if you go back and watch like um, the Dudleys and the Hardys and stuff like that, if you took the gimmicks away, they had nothing close to the Usos in terms of work rate and quality of match. You know, no. I just thought off again. I know I'm probably wrong with this. <laughs> <laughs> I remember at one point people were saying, "Was it Christopher Daniels and AJ Styles at the best tag team in the world?" At one point, loved them. But then see, Christopher, I'm, Daniels for, Christopher Daniels for me was the greatest independent wrestler in the world. So, you know, it's a little bit hard for me to go, but I'd still think the Usos, uh, Usos are a better tag team than AJ Styles and Christopher Daniels. Anton can't stand Christopher Daniels. He hates his what? guts. Why? <laughs> Anton hates he said he, 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 he exposed himself too much. You can see he's about to do this one, this one. <laughs> right, I, think, I think he was one of the first ones for me that just felt like this is where it's just the moves for the move's sake. You think like, that's why he never got a big contract? Like never. I don't know if that's what stopped, but I felt like that was the, you know, like the probably the genesis of a lot of like what we got now, where it's like he was doing really nice moves, but it's like you could see there was no real flow to it. It's like I'm just doing that move and I'm doing this nice, this best BME was it the best yeah. move sort ever. It's like, but there's no. It felt very clinical, like mm-hmm. no, no, no emotion to what he was doing. That's why I think when he like did the Curry Man thing, it's like that covers up. Oh, Curry Man like, was amazing. I love yeah, that. I mean, D- Dean Malenko was sort of like emotionless, but it it still felt like he's doing Ice Man. Yeah, <laughs> but whereas like Chris, that's that's how it felt to me when I used to watch. Oh, like, him, are we know, saying like is Dean Malenko better than Chris Daniels? Yeah, probably. Like, yeah, I think. Yeah, I, yeah. But yeah, Dean similar, Malenko like, was untouchable. He was, yeah, you, and, it, and, it, and it fit him to do that kind of like style and just yeah. You know, but I I don't know for me, and that's where like with TNA and. Like I, that, <laughs> that's where a lot of this spot wrestling really like took off in a big in a big way. Wow, because, that was that AJ Styles, Chris that was they're doing like let's do the intricate spots, let's get oh, creative. Meltzer's gonna come up. Win. You keep slagging. I was gonna say that. Oh, right. Hitman hit will back me. Hitman will back me against Meltzer. No, no, for no sure. worries. For sure. Yeah, he, he don't get even if I'm wrong. Even if he thinks I'm wrong on Christopher Daniels. To be fair, I think Meltzer's <laughs> a fucking dork. I hate Meltzer. No, I think he's uh, Meltzer is one of the key fucking problems with what wrestling is now because everyone's trying to basically be enamored with his five-star system their wrestling match is solely to get the Meltzer approval which is apparently now more important than being a good worker which i do not like at all like, what was the thing that al snow said al snow said that wrestlers would rather listen to Meltzer than listen to stone cold listen to hulk hogan is the yeah. Triple H, and I thought, yeah, you're right. Most people would. Yeah, they would. Yeah, and that's exactly my point, though. Like, if I'm in a room, right? Like, I'm a student. I love yeah. listening. And if I'm in a room with the Undertaker and Stone Cold and Meltzer walks in, he goes, "Here's my," t-. I'll be like, "Who's this fucking dog? Get out!" I say, "You get it. Get the hell out of here. They piss off me. Get the fuck out!" Like, this is a room for professionals, not dorks who like newspapers. Get out! Out you, you go. I was gonna say something to you. I know you 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 be upset, Aaron. Obviously, I'm a bit upset. You know, he talks about five star match. Allegedly, uh, at Forbidden, the Elite and Eddie Kingston and Ishii. Ishii? Ishii. Ishii. What did I, what did I say? Ishii. Ishii. I'm a hero, Ishii. Yeah, he's fucking sick. Versus BBC and... Did you Who say BBC? Huh? Did, you say B- did you say BBC? Say, I put it, I say BBC. <laughs> I say BBC. <laughs> I say, say, say. The British <laughs> Broadcast. Big tag team, isn't it, that one? Sorry. <laughs> Talk about the, a lot of staff to call upon. You know, <laughs> I apologize. I keep, I always keep saying BBC. I don't know why I keep saying it. Say B, BCC, BCC, and the rest. That got a badly six star, six star um, rating. Because like, yeah, for that garbage. Of course it has, because it's got all these cuckolded lover boys in it. Like, it's like I don't take that seriously because it's like he gives every match Omega's in five or six stars now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, mate, this is a horrific thing. You might have to put a sensor on this for your one, at least, Um, because this is an awful thing to say. But ultimately, Kenny Omega could molest a child and Dave Meltzer would give it five stars. He probably would, to be fair. 
because he's, he's a fucking moron. He's you know so enamored with him. It's pathetic. It's actually pathetic how much he's willing to defend their their abject behavior. Like because they do on the odd occasion do good things. These guys they can achieve good things, but they are so enamored. With, do you know what they are? They're petulant children who are always given their fucking sweets whenever they want them. They their parents never say no to them, mm. and because of that, they never do anything that's good for the business, only for themselves. They're spoiled little shits, is what they are. I know this is a WWE, WWE show, but can we just speak about this for just two minutes, please? Sure, two one. Minutes, <laughs> Personally, I'm supporting CM Punk here. To me, oh, yeah, it's business. Absolutely. It's business. Yeah. Brett hated Sean, but yet they still work to each other. I mean, yeah. I'm sure there's many. I'm sure there's many boxers, many UFC guys over the years that can't stand each other. But you know what? When it comes to making money, when it comes to basically putting on good shows, they do it. Supposedly, I'm hearing that oh, that um, the the elite. And uh, what's it? Um, Hangman Page has a uh, what do you call it? A not restriction. What's the word I'm thinking of? A a gag order? A what? gag order? Oh, a non-disclosure agreement or something? Non-disclosure. Um, what's the one? Uh, it's late for but I apologize. The one where you can't go next to them again. Uh, what's oh, like a restraining oh, order. Restraining order. Restraining order. Yeah. restraining order. That's it. I'm told they have the restraining order against CM Punk, so they can't be nowhere near him apart from when he at pay per views. That's, and I thought, that's... What wow. Kind of ma- what kind of man is that? So you're to be Can you imagine me... back in the day though, Stan mm-hmm. Hansen and Vader having restraining orders against each other because they're that sensitive? Can you imagine Shawn Michaels when he had the beef with Brett? He goes to Vince and says, Vince, I've got a restraining order against Brett Hart. Sorry, can't do Survivor Series. Sorry, we can't do SummerSlam. Vince will look at him and say, Listen, Sean, put your take take those knickers off, put your boxer shorts on, go go fight and move on. I, I, like I said, I don't know what it is. What's your opinion, mate? You are. <laughs> quiet about it, so. Listen, Anton's a sheep. He, he, he doesn't want to get a no one's bad, bad side. He wants to make sure that Meltzer talks good about him. You're not Mr. Clean. You're Mr. Lovely. Like, oh, yeah. like there's nobody. I bet there's not a single person in this business that dislikes you. Not yeah. a single one. Like, I have a list of enemies a mile long. That uh, a mile long. And I'm okay with that because I don't give a fuck. Like, I if somebody, <laughs> like, I, do you know how many shows I have to do as a videographer or a commentator or an MC where there are guys on that in that locker room who I know fucking hate me because like, he's that over opinionated prick from Wrestle Plug or he's the guy who he, you know, he slagged off my graphic design or whatever. I don't care because for me, I care most about the business looking good more than myself. Yeah. And mm-hmm. these guys don't. And that's what I hate m- the most about these guys is they don't care if the business looks good. They care about themselves and their image. And I'm not about that. I really couldn't care less. Anybody who's like worked with me in a match or worked with me in a show will say, yeah, Aaron is very opinionated. He's very fiery. But the thing that always stands out is he does what's best for everybody in that building, whether he likes them or not. That's something I really can mm. put my pin on. And Anton's seen it. He's watched me work. Yep. Like, I care about our business looking good. And ultimately... Guys can't look good unless I do my job properly as a videographer, commentator, etc. My job has pretty much, from the get-go, been about making everyone else look as good as possible. So I find it offensive when somebody walks into the room, whether it's my room or somewhere else in this business, and says, oh, I don't give a shit about what it was good for business. I care that I get over with my mood mm. set and all that. I need to get my shit in. Looking at you, Brian Cage. People like you, that's why you're not a star, because you can't yeah. do what's good for the business. You do what's good for you. Anton, mm-hmm. no, I agree. Yeah, at the end of the day, like I said, it is professional wrestling, and that's that is the that is that should be it. It's like you be professional. You don't have to. You don't have to be buddies with everybody. You don't have to be best friends. But if you know that what's yeah, they like say what's good for business, and and I, yeah, and I said at the time, like I I thought it was a bit real shame if CM Punk didn't like if that was it for CM Punk because of all of that stuff. It was. Yeah. I'm really glad that he's back. Like and, and yeah, and if yeah, they have to keep them apart. It's no big deal because in the end of the day, like oh. It'll get attention, but it's, it's not that big of a deal. Like, we need to see CM Punk work with uh, either, either like Adam Page again or like the Young Bucks. It, Kenny Omega would probably be the only real like match that some, yeah, some people would consider a bit of a dream match. And even then, it's like it doesn't feel like you're really missing out if that doesn't ever happen. Do you know what I mean? So, so if you have to, just, you know, just go about your business. Don't work with each other. You don't really want to, just, but you, can, you should be at the same show. Like, of it's like a job. Like, yeah, like if I don't like somebody at work, I still got to go to work. Like, you know, just, just do your business. Just don't get, yeah, just don't cause trouble with each other. If you don't, if I don't like you, you don't like me, let's just leave it alone. You know, I'll do my work, you do your work. And and that's it. But Joe, it's just don't need to, you don't have to interact. Only if you have to interact on, on a work level and they don't have to. 
Like they they could still be on the same show in a different match and just go about your business. That's that what I like a man who works in HR, isn't it? I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Think about it. CM Punk's got his own show because these petulant kids can't be around him. Mm. And the thing is, wasn't wait, I was gonna say, wasn't wasn't them who came to him? Yeah. The, I was gonna say the whole mm, thing. To him, yeah. He yeah, he had plenty to say. Has mm. when has CM Punk not had something to say, right? Yeah. He's, That's what people loved about him, didn't it? Yeah, didn't they? Always had an opinion. Mm. And they act surprised, like, what mm. CM Punk said something. Oh, so we're gonna storm into his locker room. This is the facts we've been given by everyone around there. They're saying yeah. that they're the ones who initiated a fight. How weird a world do we live in that these guys tried to instigate a fight with him? He defended mm. himself and stuck up for what he believes in. Mm. And basically, the woke, tart generation of wrestling fans are all having a little cry because ultimately mm. they can't relate to CM Punk because they no. don't have any balls. Pussies, they got no women. They relate, they, got... To, they relate to Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks because they're always being victims. They love being mm. victimized. Oh, you know, everyone feels sorry for me because everyone's picking on me. Like, that's fine. But you know what? I don't even like CM Punk that much. I've never been no. that big a fan of him, ironically enough. But mm. I would much rather listen and watch anything that CM Punk does because I know mm. that it's genuinely something that's authentic to him than these people just pretending, just totally. But it's all a facade. It feels so fake whenever I watch them. Well, all I can say for CM Punk was he set out, and I think they said he, what he made was it five or six million a year. Mm. More food, more food, Tony Khan. Oh, yeah. Well, so far, he's the one who's kind of like laughing <laughs> yeah. in the situation because he's come back, isn't he? And he, if anything, he's probably got a more prominent role yeah. in AEW now, again, than, than they do. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's like he's, they're he's just back. getting him over more by being yeah. flat. But he's he out anyway because he was injured. So it's like, it's almost like, now I'm ready to come back. I'm back. As soon as but I was ready to come back, they took me back. Marks on Facebook that are slagging me off. I was fucking Anton about this quite a bit. I've got a lot of heat mm. with certain promotions right now and they just they can't stop talking about me they keep putting statuses up about me all the fucking time i'm like that's all right you keep talking about me because that means more people are like what's this Aaron Nick's about publicity yeah. mate you know like there is no bad publicity when it comes to no. stuff like that because as soon as you mm. actually arrive at my doorstep and see what i'm creating on a regular basis you realize okay this guy's fucking legit yeah he's got some mm. strong opinions i don't have to agree with us but this is the thing when i was a kid if you had a disagreement with someone that was it you just had a disagreement and you got mm. on with it same yeah, you spend the rest of your life crying like a little fucking bitch on social media about it, and that's what they do. Yeah. Um, and they're they're the absolute pinnacle of that. The elite, they're the pinnacle of the wrestling fans and the workers who are far more interested in being woke, sensitive marks than they are about actually making money and making our business look good. And that is why two million people watch wrestling a week instead of what thirteen or fourteen, which was the case back in the Attitude Era. Before you know, before we end this bit and we go back to Money in the Bank, I said to Anton this. I said, look, I'm out again. I was never someone who got picked on. I admit there was times where I, you know, defended myself quite a lot and was around certain people. But I said, I thought that maybe the 80s and 90s of wrestling, fans wise, were tough, if that makes sense. And then for some reason, the 2000s, and again, this is a, this is what I had a younger mindset. I said that uh, when I was much younger, the dorks, the neeks, the losers came into wrestling and all the tough guys went to boxing in the UFC. Yeah, and basically the guys who can't fight because not a bad way. I'm not saying obviously most of us can't fight, but in a in a legitimate fighting situation, I bet you maybe seventy percent of wrestlers today probably couldn't fight in life, legitimately. You mean? Yeah, and I think a lot of these guys. Like in the eighties, if you couldn't yeah. fight, you weren't in this business. Mm. Uh, was it Bill know. Watts? Bill Watts and uh, was it uh, Florida Championship Wrestling? So, yeah, but I, I don't know. I, I just, he said, I the, just worst, like, the worst thing you can do is say yes. that everything needs to be all inclusive. No, you still need to work no. and be a part of it. Like yeah. when people say wrestling should be all inclusive, no, it shouldn't. No. No. Absolutely should not. I totally disagree. If you want it to be all inclusive, great, but that's why less people watch it. Because I didn't watch wrestling as a child because I wanted to see the binman walking down the street. No. Screen. I watched it because I wanted to see larger than life characters. You watched it because you're like, I'm not going to be Bret Hart. I'm never going to be Bret Hart. I'm never going to be The Giant or Sid Vicious or Razor Ramon. These are guys that you just realistically know. I'm not going to be like that. That's just not me. They've, they've, they're a totally different breed of animal. Yeah. And nowadays it's like, oh, I could be just like him. What's the point then? Like, yeah, it's nice to be relatable with people when you're in your friendship circles and stuff like that. Not when you're yeah. watching a fucking, what is this ostensibly supposed to be a fictional television series. Like, you know, you don't have, you don't want, 
how shit is the Avengers if all of them are just normal people with no superheroes? You're not watching that. The reason Iron Man's fucking great is because he's got billions of dollars and creates these incredible... The reason Captain America, he's got this serum and all this shit, like Wolverine, like that's not relatable because it's not supposed to be relatable. Mm. They're supposed to be larger than life. They're supposed to be completely out there. And that's what wrestling's supposed to be. And the thing is, people will say, oh, you just don't want other people... Do I look like your archetypal wrestler? No. But I actually went in and worked hard and took the fucking lumps properly. I didn't take mm. any shortcuts or any shit like mm. that. No. And also, and like I said to Anton several times when we were hanging out, when was the last time I fucking took a spot over somebody else? There's been multitude of times. I was supposed to wear that IWE show, wasn't I? I was supposed to be in mm. the Rumble. Gave my spot up because my skill set was in being an MC. Because, again, it's what's important for the show, not for me. Yeah, I could have yeah. put my gear on, come out in the Rumble, and fucking just had a little five minutes of glory. I don't care about that. Mm. And that's the big issue there is that ultimately, like you say, all the dorks, all the geeks, they've gone from what made them cool, you know, all the gaming sector and stuff like that, which is great. That's your yeah. domain. Be great in that domain. Don't fucking come into somebody else's domain and bring the level down. And also the thing that really triggers me, do not ever allow fans to dictate what we do as professionals. Do not ever, ever fucking say to me, that as a fan who has not worked and taken the fucking abuse and gone through the sacrifices I've gone through, don't fucking sit there and tell me that you have a right to tell me what's heat and what's not and things like that. Shut up. You paid money to sit there and fucking watch that as a mark. So be a mark. Mind your own fucking business because I don't come into your workplace and start mm. mouthing off at you telling you how to do your job. So don't come into mine, especially when you've got no experience whatsoever other than the fact that you sit at home wanking off over Kenny Omega matches on YouTube. That's not <laughs> Shut your mouth. Get back in your fucking hole. Yes, Melzo, Melzo, <laughs> Melzo go, back, go back to California, Melzo. We don't need you down here. Yeah. Right, Anton, you. I know you've got plenty to say about how much you hate these people. Go on, lay them in, mate. Go on. <laughs> Put the exclamation mark on it for me. Come on, Anton. <laughs> Is this, where, is this where it just cuts off? <laughs> yeah. End of it. You see, we brought Anton's just, <laughs> see, brought, Me and Aaron, we say it like it's Anton's basically, he's, he's a corporate guy. He, he, he doesn't want to get in trouble. Again, he's basically in the middle of WWE and AEW. So like, he's an how, office man. <laughs> he's an my, HR man. My, I'm Zen. My anger level is uh, You different. are pretty Zen, yeah. <laughs> you know what? Sometimes, sometimes I do envy that. I wish I was less ferocious about it. But the reason I'm ferocious about it is because I want people... Like I said to you several times, I use that pie analogy all the time. I think everybody, so for instance, we're all working on a wrestling show. If we all put in as hard work as possible, we all get to eat at the table. We all get to have fun and enjoy ourselves. When guys aren't fucking sharing shit and taking shortcuts or too busy playing on their Twitch streams or too busy fucking playing on their, and by the way, I love gaming and shit. I've got a third streak as well, but I don't allow it to interfere with what I'm doing there. And it's that thing of nobody cares about eating at the table anymore. They all want to fucking create their own little table and eat by themselves. Yeah. One thing I will say... Yeah, that's why Roman Reigns makes a lot of money and all you fucking fat, sweaty marks who love AEW don't because Roman Reigns knows what's good for business. And by the way, he's he's eating shit quite a bit lately and it's all Mm. been for the benefit of the business and the storytelling. And that's what happened here. He ate shit Mm -hmm. and look at the reaction from the crowd. He he still won it. He won it there. He won. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because he did his job. Yep. How many guys are doing their job in this business anymore? That's the really annoying thing about it. Yeah. This is why I'm more passionate about British Indies than I am about mainstream wrestling, because there are more guys willing to still do their job. Guys mm-hmm. like yourselves, you go out there and work for the benefit of business, not themselves. The way you get over is by not trying to get yourself over, in a sense, yeah. by doing what you're told to do and doing the job that you are bred to do. You've trained mm-hmm. hard to do this, so do it mm-hmm. properly. Do it, you know, work harder than anyone else in the room at what you do. That's what I do. And that's why people don't like me because they're fucking jealous because I've got more work than them. I'm tired of apologizing for it. Like, you know, I've gone through some years of apologizing, going, oh, okay, fair enough. You know, you don't like me. I apologize. I'm not apologizing for that anymore. Why should I? I was homeless for two months chasing my dream. How many people are willing to go through the same sacrifice? Not many. Very little. One thing I'll yeah. say, though. Great pay per view. <laughs> you want to prediction me? You, you won. He did outright, outright couldn't couldn't fault it. Yeah. So um, fault I've, been, it. I've been trying desperately not to be smug about this. So, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> final scores are at the doors, ladies and gentlemen. So, with the predictions, now we don't actually have a forfeit, which is a real shame. By the way, I wish I'd had more faith in my beard being shaved. <laughs> 
So, you know, see, I'm not perfect by any means, but I ain't pretending. So, Anton, three and four. <clears throat> Congratulations, mate. You are third. Gabe, four and two. Not a bad effort. Mm -hmm. And uh, your winner with a unanimous seven and oh is Aaron Nix. <laughs> Clean, sweet. You call yourself Mr. Clean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, does, that mean, does that mean that Anton has and to now cut his hair? Oh. No, there was no forfeit. He, gave us. And, and, he, gave yeah, us. he said there was no forfeit. That no, nobody, nobody volunteered Relevancy. <laughs> there is only one man at the top of this. <laughs> hey, I'm at the top of the mountain. Seven and oh. Wrestle plug wins. <laughs> When I next see you, I will give you a fried Mars bar as your gift. I, uh, I'll i say that's well arousing to me. Do you know, I've never had a fried Mars bar, actually. I'm really <laughs> I, I, can't believe it. I have. It's quite sweet. Very sweet. I've only had I like can, I can imagine bites. that. It's great. <laughs> right. So, hey, fingers crossed, AEW, because we still might go. <laughs> yep. To be fair, to be fair, people, I have spoken to my job and they have said they're working on getting it, but there is a couple of tickets. But the only thing is, it will be a bit high up than where I, I thought it was going to be. I'm going so, for company. I'm not going yeah, for... I'm honestly, same. legitimately not going for a show. I'm going so I can no. hang out with these two yeah. fucking legends. I don't care about that. Like, but I'll, I'll, I'll know tomorrow. I'm to guys who have asked me if they can tag along because they're desperate <laughs> to hang out with you guys. So yeah. um, if you've if there's any spares, let yeah. me know. I'll give you the money up front and you can get them. Ah, but, don't worry about it. Don't worry. Don't worry. I think I'll, I will know tomorrow. I'll know tomorrow. So I'll, I'll let Anton know and then go yeah, from there. Let us know. Because, uh, yeah. yeah, like it's that thing of like, I, I think it's right. People are like, he hates AEW. And that diatribe probably certainly helps with that. <laughs> oh, yeah. But it's that thing of, I want it to be successful. And that's why I'm fucking angry. Yeah. Doing everything in their power not to be successful and good for the business. Yeah. And that fucks me off. Do what's good for the business. Tony Khan, get your fucking scrawny little ass out of the way and get somebody who knows what they're doing in that place. And make Christian Cage world champion me and I'll be very, very happy. Hey, did you see him on a Collision when he came yeah. out with the CMT title? As yeah. was, he didn't even win it and he's like, yeah, that's mine. Fuck you, dinosaur. <laughs> you know what I like? You know what I like, Aaron? It's the fact that for years I've supported, just like Cody Rhodes, just like Cody Rhodes, I supported Christian for so many years, went DNA, came back to WV, and now everyone likes him again. Now, as everyone likes him, like, him as TNA champion. Anton, you hear it? Mm -hmm. But my only problem is now, Aaron, now that everyone likes him, I feel like I have to kind of let him go and say, okay. Nah. <laughs> He's been him off. Yeah. Been, you know what, Christian? It's been fun, but you, yep. walk, you walk alone now. You're Batista, mate. Off you go. Mate, I took Cody Rose from this snut nosed kid with Hulka Holly. Getting slapped in the face, broke his nose. I love how you're taking credit. For <laughs> he took oh, him, yeah. I'm Vince Under, Russo. I'm Vince Russo, mate. I'm Vince Russo. I was oh, there okay. basically. So you tried when... to bury his entire career then, did you? Yeah, like, sure. That's the one thing I don't think we agree on. We agree on pretty much everything. Me and Gabe are like kindred spirits of wrestling, but Vince Russo triggers the fuck out of me. And you, know, I, you know why I actually want you to go to AEW as well? Because I'm actually hearing that Vince Russo's going to be there. And as a fan of his, I actually want to meet him. Again, people, I'm a wrestler, but I'm also a fan. I want to meet him and say, Vinny, you know this guy over here? He can't stand your guts. Go on, Aaron, be a man. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I I'll be like, yo, like, yo, for me, you have fucking damaged our wrestling business. Explain yourself. I don't care. What's he going to do? Beat me up? Of course he fucking <laughs> <is>. <laughs> he's, got his, he's got his son, Vinny Jr. with him. He means, he's got his son, Vinny Jr. Vinny, has he got a, I have no idea if he's got a, What, is his son hard? I don't know. Like. No. I... <laughs> Anton will back him. Yeah. Go on, <laughs> <laughs> he went for DDP. Yeah. He's like he's, he's like Fair six enough. foot. He's like six foot three, skin and bones. So yeah, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. Well, him and Brandon Cutler can touch each other. What if they Dungeons and Dragons? Then can't they? So, Anton, it. if I, again, again, people, I'm saying out there, if I can get it sorted, which I'm hoping my work can do it, we're gonna go there. We're gonna mm -hmm. do some sort of recording. But also, I want to try to get into Vince Russo because Anton knows he's my guy. He's my old guy. I think what, He's like, I, 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 this is the thing, right? I hate Vince Russo for wrestling. He could yeah. be a lovely human being in real mm. life. If he wants to sit there and talk sports or something, great. We'll probably get on like a house on fire because I know he's passionate about sports. Oh, yeah. But it's that thing of, I, you know, I, I will not back away from that. If you're like, this guy hates you guys, I'm like, no, I don't hate you as a person. I hate you as a wrestling individual, though. What the fuck are you playing at? Like, I'll, I'll say, I'll say, Vinny, he's joking. No, he's, he's joking. Don't worry about it. Yeah, he'll be like, don't worry about I'll it. He's, he's just I'll say, stupid. I'll him. say he was one of these guys when you won the WCW title. Basically, he was coming these pants. He's like, "Yes, Vince Russo, WCW World of Champion." No, don't lie to people. It's not mm. helping. 
I don't want me to do that. It's like, it's, what's wrong with you? You're the kind of person who likes the three stages of hell, hell and hell. <laughs> Not, not the free tier cage, didn't you? <laughs> that's an over gimmick over here. He's like, yeah, that's the problem with Hell and Cell. It needs three more layers. Uh, I bet you love Dungeon of Doom, didn't you? I bet you thought that was him. <laughs> oh, I hate him. I hate him. <laughs> the Dungeon of Doom? <laughs> oh, dear idea. Well, um, yeah, talk the business once again on <laughs> the Wrestle Plug. When are you going to update that Facebook page, Anton? Come on. It's why me. Why me? You know what? <laughs> <laughs> no, we will. We well, will get it done. We'll We're be gonna on gonna it. Update... I tagged you. I tagged you on the predictions thing. Didn't even get a share. Shame. By, all right, you know what? By Wednesday, we will update it. We will. By Wednesday, we will update it. So. Yeah. Well, all jo- all joking aside, yeah, our, our social media presence will be improved. Mm. We're going to finish Russo it. So, yeah. <laughs> Anybody can see it, they both just look it down like, oh gosh. Nah, nah, not happening. One thing way, I'll say, people. One thing I'll say. A good graphic designer, by the way, boys. Let me yeah, know. I was going to say. <laughs> we got, we got to give Aaron Happily, though, but genuinely, listen yeah. to the guys. They're so much fun. They're super entertaining. They're fucking real. And they're I'm some, real. You can choose any amount of podcasts, and that's yeah. great. There are loads of people doing great things, but mm. legitimately. Let's talk business is actually really fucking good. Like, and I won't say that. Like, if it's shit, I'll say so. It's oh, yeah. That's, that's true. Oh, yeah. Excellent. And both of these guys have a wealth of knowledge in our business. And ultimately, I'd much rather listen to that than, I don't know, Nigel, who lives in his mum's basement still and talks about AW Dynamite in a week. So, Nigel. <laughs> oh, no, I know. In your basement, is it? <laughs> oh, no, wait. That's how you can afford the rent. You got a load of AW twinks in your basement. I'm telling you. Yeah. <laughs> Work, you little tinkers. <laughs> Phenomenal stuff. Anything you boys want to plug before we wrap it up? Any uh, upcoming dates or anything? Mr. Clean. <laughs> that's what you see what I mean. I get, I get all that. Mr. Clean, where are you going to be? You're going to be a Rumble soon, aren't you? I will be, yeah, in a refereeing capacity. Uh, there will be some upcoming matches tag matches for the business we're not we're not done as we we talked about before but yeah we'll we'll be putting those up as i say our social media presence our facebook page needs to be updated and it will be we'll yeah we're gonna get sort of get that up to speed and and matches will go out on there there will there is there is some things in the pipeline something something pretty big coming up in the next couple of months as well awesome. i believe also i will be at the is it the market show on the 20s the 22nd anton 22nd yep. yep, the Oval. Uh, yep. Yeah, I'll Rumble be wrestling. there. I may be making an appearance. Who knows, people? It's a big deal when Gabe comes out of his house. Huh? Yep, <laughs> indeed. He doesn't do that much. Like, he's too busy sitting there, like, worshipping. He's got this, like... It's a bit like... Anyone ever watched the old Hey Arnold TV series where she had that shrine to Arnold in her closet made entirely exactly. out of sweets? Like, he's got one for Vince Russo. Like, he's got this... <laughs> going to his eyes you... covered. And he's got this almighty Vince Russo. And he's got, like, all the fucking props. He's got the, the American football helmet he wore when he was in that horrible cage match where he got speared out of it by God. But, yeah, I, th- I know my shit, mate. I've seen all of it. Like, one yeah. thing I will say, people, where Aaron seems to... Just be slightly mistaken. I'm actually a Vince Russo guy and a Cornette guy. I'm one of a very rare breed. I'm what a very saying? rare breed. You love AEW and WWE is what he's saying. No, no, no. I love WCW and WWE. I, I like TNA. He's like all of WCW, like everything, even right at the end. Okay, I liked it up to November 2000. And then I was, I was WCW done. Sin has to be one of the worst pay-per-views in the history. Yeah. Yeah. Which, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to troll back through the WrestlePlug archive, me and my old co-host, Steve Neal, completely dissected that for two hours. So if you want a really good... It's audio as well, so you can listen to it on Spotify, Podbean, whatever. Check it out. Uh, we went through a lot of old-school pay-per-views from WCW. We went through the whole invasion angle, uh, a lot of the Attitude Era stuff. So if you want to have a throwback, because we love our old wrestling. We're proper historians for that shit. So if you want to check that out, if that's something I want to get you guys on. I'd love to, once mm. a month, sit down, yeah. pick a pay-per-view that we all remember and go back through it and dissect it and talk about yeah. it. Yeah. I'm going to listen to that WCW one. For sure. I'm going to harass the fuck out of you two and two. Because <laughs> <laughs> right? literally, you are money when it comes to the podcast game. Like We need you boys on here on a regular basis. I think the only thing I'll say before we go, I think we need to get Anton away from his, uh, his middle ground. Because obviously I'm animated but also i could also be calm but more animated you're aaron animated but yet an intellectual animated even though i'm making me yeah, there's no stupid. calm here <laughs> but mr clean is very as he says clean he's a politician clean. is what he is no. <laughs> he's it's a not... politician <laughs> he's <laughs> open-minded he does not he doesn't yeah, have the anger yeah, issues that you two guys have got you two guys have got anger issues nah, nah, mate, you're don't, try, don't try and <laughs> make me hate everything 
There must be something to get you. There must be something. Yeah, we'll learn, and then if you, if, <laughs> right, okay, okay, the way you say like as if it, that, you, yeah, there is times where I will go off on one, but it it, it, it has to be just. I won't just go off on things like I'll, I. I genuinely try and find you're like, no, no, fuck this guy. I'm not watching this guy. There must be one. I'm trying to remember what's now. I don't uh, think there is now. I mean, that's the thing. It's if a certain thing there, might, might be Diesel, yeah. Diesel. He used to hate Diesel. He used to hate Diesel. No, nah, I never hate, it. There's I hate things, Diesel. There's things that, like, again, for me, like, if there's something that bothers me, I can also think, why does it bother me? And is it is it a me problem sometimes? It's like, it's not always a case of, you know, like, is different people like different things. And some, just because I don't like it doesn't always mean that, oh, it's absolutely, I absolutely, it's the worst thing in the world. That's, that's me. Nothing. These things don't necessarily trigger me to get absolutely <laughs> irate. So, you know, if, yeah. if it well, does, it does. You're a candidate or something. What's going on there? <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be going around. He's going to be fucking flyer, yeah. isn't he? No, yeah. no, we're wrestlers, we go out and fly. <laughs> yeah, by the way, for modern day wrestlers, there's this thing called flyering. Really helps when you're trying to sell tickets. Try it sometime, yeah? But it's that thing, like, I can see him flying and he's going door to door, like support Anton Green for Labour. Like, I can just see it now. Like, he's a politician. I love it. Uh-uh, he's, he's not, not the case. Yeah, he's going to start a promotion again. He will. I can smell it. He can't. Fingers yeah, because fingers fingers, yeah, we'll get more bookings, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he knows. Yeah, I, I remember you buttering me up. Oh, I W. Yeah, I'd absolutely have yeah, everything. So my promotion here. So he knows. He knows where the money's at. <laughs> I make people money, mate. That's why I love what I do. Right, we'll leave it there, lads. Thank you very much for joining the WrestleBug course. This is a collaborative effort, so make sure you check check out Let's Talk Business, particularly if you're just looking for an audio file, if you just want to listen to it with your headphones on while you're doing what you're doing in your everyday lives. Check them out. They'll have the audio hookup for you, and we'll be on the YouTube channel as per normal. Hitman, Gabe Myers, thank you very much for joining us, brother. Peace. Mr. Clean Anton Green, thank you very much for joining us. You sexy Always politician. Always a pleasure. <laughs> and gentlemen, I've been Aaron Nix, King of Shit House 3. And also, by the way, you can find me at Coliseum on the 14th. Uh, actually, no, Rumble on the 14th, excuse me. Coliseum on the 15th of July. And I'll be at Rumble on the 22nd of July and All Star Wrestling on the 29th, if anyone wants to come over and say hello. Believe it or not, I'm actually quite approachable and relatively nice, at least when I'm in a professional capacity. <laughs> you know, Orange Cassidy. I will body slam you. <laughs> it's just a, it's a matter of time. But thank you very much for watching. Let's talk business and the wrestle plug. And we'll join you very soon for more content.